When constructing your ideal workout plan and diet, you have to factor the following in. Is it realistic? Ideal has to include realistic because if it's not something you can sustain, if it doesn't work for your lifestyle, it's something you hate, well then it's not gonna work, you're not gonna do it. And then it becomes the worst option. So when you're looking at your workout plan, when you're looking at your diet, at the top of the list of things you must consider, ask yourself the following. Is this realistic for me? And be honest. What's the thing that you used to say? A subpar program done consistently is superior to the best program done inconsistently. Totally. 100%. Right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I remember, uh, well, let me ask you guys this. When did you figure this out? Because this, I think this is a, this is definitely part of the evolution of a trainer from like becoming a trainer to becoming more experienced. Yeah. Where you realize this? Do you guys remember when that it's happened like to you? Probably halfway in my career. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the first half, I'm just like, it has to be so perfect. Yeah. I have it all written out. I mean, I, I would say probably you could take it back to when I used to write everything out, like completely to the T. And then I would have that and kind of show my client here, we're going to go through all this. And then you realize, okay, there's interruptions in the workout. There's people that are in the section I wanted to work out at. There's, you know, all these like variables that you had to kind of dance around. And then uh, eventually you start to learn how to, you know, sort of figure this out and then you can do it without like having to, to structure it in that way. Yeah. It was a long time for me. Cause I know I was stuck in the, you know, making the workout as hard and as creative as possible for a long time. Yeah. You know, it was, that was like, and it, unfortunately the, and I still think this is true today that, um, gym culture kind of like, uh, creates that environment. The trainers are all kind of like competitive with each other. They're competitive with how hard the client got pushed. They're competitive yeah. with like how unique their programming is or like how unique of an exercise or whatever, like new skill or specialty that they have that they're teaching all their clients. Like it's, it's unfortunate, but uh, a lot of training clients in the gym is centered around the trainers and not so much the client's ideal needs. And it wasn't for a long time. I think that I really start to piece that together and that learning to like, give them just just the right amount that I know that they could stick to it and then build on that versus right. trying to cripple yeah. them. And their personalities out. too, I forgot All to mention because that was a big factor I didn't factor in <laughs> was like the clients I'd get that were just like, would refuse to do certain things. And it was, they're just adamant about that. And I used to like, we, we'd battle about it instead of just working in what I know they would actually adhere to and do consistently. And, uh, and then sort of eventually kind of guide them in the direction, uh, I was leading them, but it was like, it was so much of like a control thing for me. Yeah. I was, uh, I had three pit like that. I can recall. Cause this is a, it's always a learning process. I think if you're a trainer, but there were three like kind of pivotal, pivotal, excuse me, moments. One was with diet. Do you guys remember when we used to make meal plans for people early yeah. days? Right? Oh, yeah. Print what, it out. What right? a waste of time. You would like figure out their ca total the waste of time. The funniest part. <laughs> total waste of time. <laughs> the funniest part about that. And I, I think, I think I knew like, I know we, where you're going when we were like, so we used the software apex used to make. Yes. Yeah, I know exactly where you're going. <laughs> and, and the, and the software was so, uh, you know, basic uh at that point in time like it was such a big deal that you could input all this client's information and then it could like you know you would put like the foods they like they don't like and then it would, it would make the meal plan yeah make this meal plan based off of all this information it was like oh my god it was revolutionary <laughs> back then but it was so like <laughs> whack super unrealistic because it would be something yeah. like this it would be like uh Three and a half saltine crackers, one half an orange, <laughs> yeah. and two slices of American cheese. Yeah. Like, Who the fuck is going to make that for a meal? You know, and so I random. actually remember yeah. for at least a year or two that I gave all my clients diets like that. A oh, wait, my snack yeah. is a quarter of an orange and half a tablespoon yeah. of peanut butter. Yeah. How does that work? And, that, yeah. the, and that, the, here's how annoying, because like, you look back and it's so annoying, right? Like, what was I doing? I would tell the client, like, well, no, just. Oh, to get an orange, eat a quarter, yeah, yeah, save no. the rest. Co coaching them on how yeah, to yeah, how yeah. to actually make measure it out your quarter, you know, tablespoon of. I remember one Just client ten had, almonds, bro. You know? <laughs> yes, I, had, I remember I had yeah, one client specifically. We were trying to hit their fat targets, yeah. and it gave her like five tablespoons of peanut butter. It's yeah. like she's like, I'm gonna give you five tablespoons of peanut butter. So ironic too, because uh, you know, and shame on us for not having this awareness as, as trainers back then. It's like, when did you ever eat no like one. that? 
No one ever no. ate like that. No. I never, never made my meals in like cut an orange in a yeah. third or no. they ate only five and a half no. saltine crackers. No, and this the, is so stupid. That was the We're first. Robots, yeah, yeah, that was the first like hint. I remember I did the meal plans and I looked at it and a client's like, who eats like this? And I remember thinking like, yeah, that's true. Like, why, what am I doing? This is not realistic at all. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of one, you know, hint. The other one was, I remember um, my trainers were talking crap. We'd had, we had this great environment when I was a fitness manager. This was early on, so I'm a kid, right? But we have these, these, we'd have this great environment where trainers talk crap. And trainers were comparing how fast their clients were getting success or was successful. Well, I got so-and-so to lose 20 pounds in this stuff. Well, I got so-and-so. And then my, one of my older trainers who'd been doing this for a long time, is like shaking his head. And I said, what, why are you shaking your head? You know, I thought he was, you know, shaking his head because they're young trainers talking crap. He goes, you guys are measuring success wrong. He goes, who, who here, raise your hand if your client's been working out consistently for five years. Like, nobody raises their hand. And I remember thinking like, oh shit. Like, wow. That's true. I yeah. said, because I've seen a lot of people lose That's 20 pounds real fast. To pay attention to. Yeah. And then gain it right back. And so that was the other piece. And then the third piece, this was when I became a general manager. One of my mentors, uh, I'll never forget, he was training one of my salespeople and he was doing a, a, a tour of the gym. And when you're presenting, you know, gym memberships and fitness, you know, one of the, the struggles is being able to get, really communicate effectively to the potential member, getting them to sign up, hire a trainer, do what's going to probably give them the most chance of success. But it costs money. It's not cheap. And I remember this person saying, oh, I can only work out maybe once or twice a week. And I was waiting for this person who was, like I said, a mentor of mine to do the typical thing where you're like, well, you know, you got to make more time. And the more time you spend with fitness, the more time you'll make throughout the day because you have more energy. And he goes, oh, cool, no problem. <laughs> and I remember him writing out a plan with one or two days a week. And I'm like, brilliant. And I sat down with him. I'm like, that's brilliant. Like, they don't have an objection anymore. Yeah. He goes, Sal, not only do I not have an objection, he goes, but what's the worst possible thing that hap that could happen if she shows up one to two days, two, two days a week consistently every week? He goes, how many days a week is she working out now? I'm like, oh, shit, zero. And he goes, now what's likely to happen if she shows up mm -hmm. one to two days a week? I'm like, well, she'll probably eventually wow. come more. So you have to factor this in because uh, if you don't, ideal means nothing. It's not ideal. What you don't do, if you don't do it, it's the worst possible uh, plan. The one you don't do is the one that doesn't work always. It always doesn't work. So you have to ask yourself those questions. You have to be honest because I think uh, what everybody does this, right? When they make a goal, especially with fitness, they make a goal and they become all of a sudden uh, like they overestimate their oh, – yeah. Either their abilities or their commitment and they go, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm throwing all the junk food out. We're only going to eat this. I'm going to the gym every day at 5 a.m. It's like, okay, this is this that's not the work. That's the problem with part. questions like, what's the best routine for this? Or what's the fastest way to get yeah. that? It's like, even if there is a, a a solid scientific answer to that question, if it's not what's ideal for you, it doesn't even matter. It's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And what, the, what a trainer or some fitness influencer online tells you like, this is the best for this, 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 and this. And so then you have people that are, debating online that, oh, so-and-so said this is the best way this. Well, okay. If if that's not something you're going to adhere to for months in and years out, then it doesn't even fucking matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter at all. Like, yeah. And you have to you have to factor that part in. And it's interesting to me that uh, we know this right now. We've been doing this for a long time, that there's not a lot of trainer certifications that speak to the behavioral aspect of coaching and training. When we learned after doing that for long enough, after all the certifications that all of us have, it's like, yeah, that you need to have that. You need to have some basic knowledge around mm -hmm. exercise, nutrition, human physiology. Like, obviously that's important, right? But once you get that basic foundation, then most of what you speak to and you teach and you train to, if you're going to be successful, is behavioral stuff. 100%. Mm -hmm. and, 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 then, and, and understanding that every client that you get is unique. And that part of the job is figuring out their their behavioral tendencies and then how to work with, with what you got to show them success. And that if I just throw the science that I learned from my last five national certifications at my client, that there's a, I'm more likely not to be successful. Yeah, just for, for trainers and coaches listening, and even for people looking to learn how to become consistent, <clears throat> when I figured this out, I went from keeping, and I was a 
you know, I was a, I was a successful trainer in the sense that I could sell more training. You know, I wasn't afraid to talk to people, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I'd say my average client went from being with me for on average six months to when I figured this piece out, they didn't leave. Yeah. They didn't. I had, I'd have clients who would sign up with me and they'd be with me for years and years and years. I had one lady who was with me for nine years. She worked out the same time, same day, every single week. And it was this piece right here where I figured out the uh, how to make things realistic, how to work and meet the person where they were, how to help push when pushing was necessary, pull back when that was necessary, but make it something that was more of a lifestyle thing versus a like, no, we got to get to your goal. This is what's going to happen. And we're going to do it this way. And it just, it, it is not long-term successful. And it's very important to understand this yeah. if you want to be successful. It's such an interesting conundrum uh, that I went through with that in terms of like the type of mentality I had as a trainer um, trying to keep clients and, and try to, um, you know, get them the, the best results. And it was all like driven from me when I shifted that mentality and just really tried to work with them. uh realizing personal responsibility and realizing that this is every step they take, they're taking, they're mm -hmm. the one doing the work. They're the one like, and, and I'm trying to prepare them to be off on their own at the very beginning uh, in terms of like empowering them, giving them all of the necessary things to um, place in front of them to the point where they'd end up like going off on their own. Those are the ones that stayed with me for the lifetime versus the other ones, you yeah. know, they would kind of come and go. You know, what's interesting about this. Whenever I talk about this on social media or we do a post that's similar to something like this, there's always the same type of people that push back on this. <laughs> and I know you're, you're laughing because you know exactly the kind of person I'm talking about. It's always the, the hyper fitness fanatic obsessed workout person. And they always say something like, <laughs> Oh, you're not going to teach excellence this way and you're teaching people to be lazy and you're encouraging it. And that's not how you get fit. That's not how uh, this works. Yeah. It's like, look, um, if that's you, you live for fitness. Most people don't live for fitness. People, most people use fitness to live. There's a very, very big difference. Now, if you, this is what you love doing, it's your passion. You want to do this all the time. That's fine. But 99% of the people out there, it's not going to be their passion. And if you're going to help them, develop a long-term relationship with this. It's going to work and improve their lives. Stop talking to them like they're fanatics or like they're obsessed like you are. It's not going to work. Okay. So let's, let's throw a curve ball at this, this discussion. Um, so you we've hammered, we're hammering home to this. So this person that how important, like the behavioral aspect and what's ideal for you. Right. So is there somebody listening right now who's like, yeah, yeah, I figured that out. What's ideal for me is like, I have my girlfriend that I meet, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and or four days a week at my Orange Theory class that I absolutely love to do. I skip breakfast and lunch because it's easier for mm -hmm. me to just avoid eating until that, you know, <laughs> four o'clock window. And I'm so consistent with that. It works well because I meet I meet my girlfriend there always. I just can avoid the food until four o'clock and I eat in this eating window, yet I'm stalling. I don't have results. I don't understand. And and I feel like that's this there's is a, what works. There's best a for difference me. between you guys hundred percent know this. There's a difference between uh there's you can be empathetic, but you also have to be honest. Mm -hmm. There's there's a difference between that and like lying. You know, like if a client came to me and said that, so well, I think you know why you're stalling. If you really want to make more progress, here's what needs to happen. It's different than like, no, you're fine. Keep doing it that way. You're stalling because I don't know. Like you can be honest. I mean, I, I'd have clients who told me their goal was to lose 30 pounds and it wasn't happening. I was honest about it when we would talk about it, but it wasn't like I made them feel like idiots for it. It's like, well, you know what you need to do. And when you're ready, we'll do it. And for now we're doing this and let's just stay on this track. And that was okay. You just got to be honest. Yeah. I think this is where the, this is where the, the, the science knowledge and experience comes in, in, in addition to the behavioral aspect, yeah, yeah. right? So you, you, you figure out that piece of like, Oh, like finding something that's ideal and, and that somebody can do uh, habitually. And so they think they find that, but then they're, they're going about it in such a, uh, uh, in a fit, uh, inefficient way that they're stalling or not seeing sure. progress anymore. I need to be able to communicate to that, to them, to, so they understand that what's going on in their body. And like, you have to somewhat understand the science in order to do that. Right. You can't, cause that they, they're telling you like, Hey, behaviorally, I figured this out. Like mm -hmm. I never miss my orange theory class, you know, Monday through Friday, I always go and show up. I'm really good about not eating. Yeah, now you can make the tweaks. Yeah. And yeah. now I That's can start to explain to them that, okay, well let's look 
look at what, what's going on here. Because you're skipping all those meals, you're only feeding your body this much nutrition. Yeah. You're only getting yourself 50 to 60 grams of protein, okay? You're only eating 1,300 calories. You know, it's like what's happening, right? And then you're going and doing a high-intensity type of class. So think about what we're telling the body right now. You're telling the body that you're going to push the shit out of it. You're going to feed it hardly anything. Even though you're weight training and you think you're sending a signal for the body to build muscle, you're not getting it the adequate tools to actually build. So there's we got to find some sort of a happy medium mm -hmm. with what it is you love to do and that you know you'll 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 mm -hmm. continually do and then also understanding that there's science involved in this that the, if you're not feeding the body properly you're not giving it adequate rest we're overstressing it it's not going to respond yeah the way well you, want you know what's uh, along those lines uh, that this is important to consider cuz you created a um, this is obviously a fictional example but yeah. the reality is if you work out and train appropriately which means it's effective for you uh, and efficient you're more likely to be consistent, okay? Because it feels good, right? Mm -hmm. Like the example you gave of that person probably is ignoring a lot of signals. She probably doesn't feel very good. Yeah, Things aren't working for her. She's, for, she's kind of forcing herself to do certain things. We've right. had clients mm -hmm. like that right, before. Right. But if you do things right, you're also more likely to stick to it because it feels, I, I hate to use the word effortless because it's not effortless, but it's effortless in comparison to how many people have experienced working out in the past. This is, I love this when I would hear this from clients is when we finally do things right, they come to be like, this is weird. I'm losing weight. And I feel like I'm not, I'm like working half as hard. I'm like, well, you're not spinning your tires in the dirt. That's the yeah. difference. The difference is we're doing this the right way. So that plays a huge role is, is, is I, the effectiveness and efficiency of, of the plan that you have. Yeah. And I definitely think there's a bit of a difference of what, how we opened up with that type of a client that we're trying to kind of start building a structure and, in. Uh, good behaviors, like almost like a beginner, uh, where, where we're kind of learning what their tendencies are, what they've done in the past, and like kind of like implementing certain things for them to build upon those better behaviors versus somebody that's coming in that is doing all of this excess work in, in that example. And, uh, you know, they, they think that they're doing all these magical things, but it's like, wait, this isn't working for me. So that's where you have to have a real honest conversation yeah. is like, this isn't working. This right, plan. right. And so we can use that energy and that work and all that, um, uh, all of those behaviors that you think are benefiting you, we could just, you know, uh, change them a bit so they look different, and, and then this will actually foster a better result. Totally. You. I mean, that's why I wanted to throw that curveball yeah. because I know there's somebody that's thinking sure. that that's thinking that way. You know, another way to sell it along the points that you you just made right now too is that like you think you love doing this because of those few aspects. I meet my girlfriend for lunch and sure. we go do this. And I love the feeling of the, the high energy with the music and the burns. Like, you know, what if I told you you could eat more food and train le less hard and actually see more results? Do you think you would love that yeah. as much or more? Right. And a lot of times when you say it and present it like that, it's like, oh, okay. It's an yeah, enticing I, thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, sure, I, I say I love all these things, but the reality is if I was able to put less effort mm -hmm. in and actually feed my body more and I would actually see more physical change in mm -hmm. results. Uh, yeah, I think I would probably like that just as much or more. And if, if you could communicate that to them, that light bulb sometimes will go off like, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm, lis I'm listening now. Yeah, what the, does, what the, does that look like? The magic formula for consistency for, for what I found with my clients was one, uh, were the result, did the results uh, feel uh, adequate in comparison to the um, uh, the effort. In other words, if you start to feel like you're putting way more effort than you're getting back, then you get uh, people not wanting to continue. But if they get results and they can look at their effort and be like, wow, the, actually the results are better than the effort I'm putting in. That's a great, that's a great piece of the formula. The second one is, can they find some way to enjoy the process? Okay. So what is it that they can enjoy about the process? And for some people, I'm not going to lie, for some people, it was the environment that I created in my studio. It's that people showed up and we had this great environment. And I knew it. I was very aware of it. And I used it because I'm like, this is helping people be consistent. She likes to show up because she gets to see the same people. You know, every Monday and Wednesday at 9 a.m., we have great conversation. There's nothing wrong with that. But for other people, it's, you know, I feel less stiff or I actually like the music I listen to or the intensity or whatever. So there has to be some level of enjoyment uh, of the process. And then last is, does it feel like it improves their life every time? Not sometimes, every time. And that means they have to know how to adjust their workouts. So if the person feels tired or stressed, are they avoiding the workouts? Cause like, Oh, I don't want to do more. Oh man, I'm too tired to do that. Or is it like, Oh, I know how to adjust the workout. Cause I feel tired and stressed. 
and that's going to help me out. When you can figure those three things out, you have the formula for uh, success, long-term consistency and success. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now on some workout programs. Our beginner workout program, MAPS Starter, is 50% off. And then we have a bundle that includes MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime that's called the Starter Bundle. That's also 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I want to read you guys something that I read this morning. That funny or serious? Funny. Oh, okay. So part of it, I part of it made total sense to me. The other half, the other, the second part, I had to think about it, and I, I have to say, I think it's also true. Okay, so <laughs> here's the first one. There's it's, it's there's two unspoken rules when it comes to strength. Okay, this is this is the the tweet. The first one is, you can be a good deadlifter or a good presser, but not both. That makes sense if you think about it. Kind of makes sense. The second one, mm. this one was funny. You can have a great grip or you can have great calves. No exceptions. Okay, so let's talk about these. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay. The first one does make sense because the long arm, short arm thing. Yeah, so let's talk but about that first before yeah. we get to the second one. Because okay, the second yeah. one was where I got stuck and I thought about it. Like, yeah, you, you got me stuck on the second one. So the first one, uh, you either pull good or you push good. And, I th and this is true. Because of leverage. Leverage. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. what makes you good at deadlifting is longer arms, uh, kind of longer torso, you know, strong, uh, you know, uh, strong grip, big, big hands. What makes you good at pressing the leverage is shorter arms, barrel kind of body. So it's all about leverage, right? So if like you're exceptional at bench pressing, you're probably not great at deadlifting and, and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. So that's a leverage thing. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Right, right, right. The second one's weird though. Think about all the people you know with like really strong grips. Think of their calves, and then think about really people with like genetically amazing calves, and then think of their grips. Every time I think of somebody, I'm like, oh, I think that's true, dude. That's that, so weird. Yeah, but is that, is that just a bias that you have? Because I can't, I can't. I don't know. I, I don't I, know. Your point you're making with the deadlift is very that makes sense. is obvious. Yes. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, that's all leverage and. Anatomy. But I can't. I can't connect because I, I would. I would fall into a category. So at one point, I had incredible, incredible grip strength. You got great and, grip strength. I have terrible calves. That's right. So I'm a grip guy too. Oh, so you're saying so you either have one or the other calves oh. if you have good grip. Oh, interesting. Either you, either you have a good grip and small calves, or you have great calves. Well, so the guy with the so, okay, so I picture <laughs> okay, so maybe this is the direction you're about. going. So the guy with the big old monster calves, I I, I picture like short, stubby little fat fingers. Well, maybe. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> just, I do. I don't know why. When I think of like the most massive like genetic calves, like not ha like necessarily you had to do a lot of work to get those yeah. just just great big calves. Yeah. I think of like short, fat, stubby yeah. fingers. Well, I mean, too. Look, I, look, you and I <laughs> yeah. are grip guys. Our calves aren't that great. Justin's yeah. got great calves. His grip is not as strong as I mean, strong strong grip, not as strong as ours. <laughs> So I was thinking of, and I thought about all the people I yeah, know I'm in my life. I'm not a puller. And you're also so, a presser, and not yeah, a puller. Yeah, that's weird. I know. Isn't I mean, that, that falls in line though on both of those. That's the point of that. Yeah. I know. If you're I, a good I, presser, I, you're not as good of a puller. I want feedback on this because I want people with hmm. like big calves to comment and people with small calves to comment. Like, are you who like, tweeted that? Who did you see tweet that? So? I, it was. It, it's been going viral. People are sharing it all over the place. So yeah, because think of like um, I don't know. I'm thinking like construction, like all the guys with like like crazy strong grip and then big you know forearms. And I'm trying to think of their calves. Like I don't know. <laughs> Because you know, the mail carriers, they got the crazy calves, yeah. and then but then I don't know. About but the, their, but the, all they got grip is paper. They got like yeah, they <laughs> yeah. Like, all their grip they're envelopes, little, envelopes all day. Yeah. Like, like, they go to grab anything over well, ten I'm, pounds or fuck. It's like whatever also, you're emphasizing the most yeah. on like a consistent basis. Yeah, right? I'm also thinking leverage there too, though, right? Because like uh, part hmm. of having a strong grip is also having big. Like, someone with big long fingers and hands can have a stronger grip. That's just Dang. leverage. Uh, but is there like a correlation between that and like smaller calves? I don't know. I thought it was funny though because I thought about people. I'm like that person. I mean, makes sense. yeah, that I'm makes trying sense to think in, in like somebody that has amazing calves <laughs> and has a really strong grip. Like yeah, it's kind of yeah. like it might hold true. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, hilarious. you like I said, you the, I have a picture. I picture somebody who's got the the big old calves, and I don't see like this like crazy grip. I'm so. gonna totally pay attention now though. When I, I know see people that's like, <laughs> just, test them. Yeah, yeah dude, so, look at their calves. Yeah. And I'm all working on my grip like, every day. Like, fuck <laughs> these guys. <laughs> hey man, I tried with the calves, dude. I don't know what yeah. But don't the, know. The, the the benching and the pulling or the pressing and the pulling that's obvious. Yeah, and this is a, this is a good thing to 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 talk about too because. Uh, because, you know, especially when I was a kid, I would look at one person versus another. That person's got more muscle. Why aren't they as strong as that person? And vice versa. A lot of things play into strength. One of them's muscle. 
Another one, this is a big one, is leverage. Oh yeah, leverage plays a who said huge it? role. Who said it? Archimedes. If you could, if you could, uh, enough with enough leverage, you could move the world. Yeah, with enough pulleys. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's that's just a fact. Like, so when you talk about something like deadlifting, which is very much so a leverage exercise, all of them are. Yeah, if you have super long arms, it's very advantageous for for deadlifting, and not so much for squatting, right? Or doing yep. if you have long limbs. And then you're a squatter. It's not ideal, or a bencher. It's not ideal. There's also leverage with muscle attachments. So think of it this way, right? Like, right. like think of where the pec attach attaches at the humerus. If the pec attaches lower on the humerus, well, now you got more leverage. Mm. So you could that also could give you just a little, little bit of advantage. Yeah, I mean, a little bit goes a long way when sure. you're looking at a lever. Like think of holding a broomstick from the very end and move your hand forward just a couple inches. Well, it's don't so you think easier. that's what this, this is? What makes the outliers right? The, yes, the guy who benches a thousand pounds totally. or something crazy is not only does he have short arms, but then he has a longer insertion of a pec insertion yep. than, than the average person yep. who's short like that. So he gets hmm. the benefits of kind of both, right? Yep. yep. And then you have the central nervous system. <clears throat> uh, its ability to fire with force can be trained. But there also is that's, a, I'm sure there's also a genetic component there, right? See, that's kind of like the the way my brain's going to uh, figure out the calf and grip <laughs> thing. Because it's like maybe, the, you know, the priorities, the central nervous system is either going to shuttle one, more. One way or the other? Yes, is that what you're like, yeah, you have one or the other, <laughs> right? the extreme. So, so it is. Like, opposite opposite all ends. That, all the, that cow milking fucked me, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Fuck. Your, brain, hey, your, your brain was, brain's like, prioritize, 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 like, prioritize. It's, prioritize, it's, yeah. it's juice, juice, juice. It was pruning neurons from yeah. your calves. Yeah, Disconnect yeah. the calves. Yeah, yeah. You don't need those. <laughs> this guy's, we, need, we need strong hands with this guy. Pure speculation. I love, I love this, though. Because when it's I was funny. A, when I was a kid, I didn't fully get it, uh, you know, in the gym because you'd see some dudes lifting. You're like, "How does that happen? What's going on?" or whatever. And then I remember uh, we talked about this guy uh, recently, Anthony Clark. He passed away, but he was a power lifter. I think one of the first men to bench press 700 pounds. And I remember looking at a picture of him. And I was like 16 years old. I used to subscribe to Powerlifting Magazine, I think it was called. And I looked at him, and I saw his bench, and I'm like, "Well." Holy shit, his arms are hella short. He's got a w big old wide body. Yeah, yeah. I said, well, yeah. He's, he's got a four-inch movement. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, he can yeah. bench hella more because oh, he's got, yeah. whoop, you know, way better leverage. Oh, you know? For I sure. Know. I know. It's it's good thing to consider, too, because we you, people compare themselves against other people. And, uh, I mean, unless you're twins, like, it's not. It's not fair. Yeah. No. It's, it's you know, it's totally not fair. It's pretty rare that you see somebody who's like, you know, like an incredible pusher and a puller. Almost everybody has got, you know, one of them that they have a-, mm -hmm. a, a I mean, you can, a, and then again, you, you th this becomes more evident the more extreme you are that's right, the more in a particular- a, Yeah. So if you have like an exceptional deadlift, then you're, then the, the, the I guess the offset with the bench is going to be even bigger. Yeah. And yeah. somebody's going to just, you know, general kind of- overall with the with the strength and stuff but anyway yeah, i thought yeah. that was uh hilarious adam did you know you you have to know this you're you have all of us you gotta have you gotta know this that's here do you know this, the fedex story the guy who founded fedex and how they almost went under and how he pulled himself out i do know this story but i can't think of it right now i'm gonna pull it up okay okay uh, i just read it and i'm like this is it's crazy. a it's a great story let me uh Dude, bro, do, it's hilarious. Do we not talk it's, about it's, this like early mind pump days? I don't know. I feel like that's a story that we talked about a long time ago. Yeah, I give know, it to I me and see if I can finish the story. It, I this know. is literally what you should not do if you're an entrepreneur and your business is about to go under. Okay. But it's also pretty awesome. Yeah, to he read. did some. Come on. So I'll read. In 1973, FedEx had a had five thousand dollars in the bank and a twenty four thousand dollar fuel bill. So the founder, Fred Smith, he couldn't get a loan fast enough. So here's what he did: he took his five grand to Vegas. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he won twenty seven thousand dollars playing no blackjack. Yeah. Twenty seven grand playing blackjack. That's always back. the joke, right? Like I've I've heard people like in that situation. I'm just gonna go to Vegas. Yeah. Well, it worked. Does it? He won twenty seven grand, came back, yeah. and now FedEx. And is then just, it took off from there. Wow. And it took off, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I think the the balls. I do remember that. Yeah. I think I brought that story up years ago because that's, that's an old, crazy. old, obviously old story. And I had a a, a, a trainer who worked for me. That worked for FedEx, and I think that's actually how I found that story out uh, from the like originally. Because I know I knew that story. I thought it was crazy. Now imagine if you're his friend and he tells you he's, gonna, he's like, "Dude, my business is tanking. I'm just gonna take my money, go to Vegas." Mm -hmm. You'd be like, "What are you doing? You are the <laughs> stupidest person <laughs> so on earth. Irresponsible." Yeah, and then he comes back. I won twenty seven grand. You're the man. I mean, I wonder what I wonder <laughs> how many how many people have actually like tried that, like been that desperate before. I know that's like one of the like when you read the. I'm sure way more fails than success. The, the gambling, like they have like a big 
old thing of like, you know, to like, like a warning, right. In all casinos. Mm-hmm. And I, I know if you read the whole thing in there, it's like one of the things is like, do not gamble to pay your bills or whatever like that. Like it's, it's actually <laughs> yeah. on the thing. <laughs> you guys know anybody that's made a fortune gambling? Like legit. Well, I've I've met several professional um, gamblers. When I would when I would gamble, what do and, they play? It's always black. It's always a uh, poker, right? Yeah, okay. poker's yeah. Yeah, because Usually. well, not There's always. No professional like, slot player, but most yeah. Slot I've never player. yeah. I've never met a, a prof- I don't know if that does that even exist. Is that really a thing? Because there's there's legitimate strategy involved in, old lady in poker, right? Lucky yeah, right. I, I would, like there's legitimate strategy yeah. in that. Um, even, yeah, because you can be good. Yeah, it's not just chance. And when I've actually sat and talked with them, like the, and I, I've learned a lot sitting and watching professional poker players. And the, th- the one thing that I have put together that's most common is patience. Mm-hmm. Is you have to have unbelievable patience. You have to be able don't to. Don't you just fold a bunch of times? Yeah, you okay. just you. So <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how you know if you know how Texas Hold'em works or like that, but you 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 only got to put money in at would to see your cards if you're the 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 front two. Uh, so if there's yeah. a table of nine people oh. big or small blind yeah if you're the big or small blind you have to put money to see your cards everybody else gets to see their cards without actually risking any money so if you play statistically like only mm-hmm. when i have a good good cards ace king right. a pair above whatever like suited and numbers close like there, there's a whole host of like what would be considered percentage wise stat- or statistically a, a, a good hand you fold all the rest and then you add in the in fact the other element which is learning to work and play the table and the players and patiently waiting for the the, the guys that are the uh what, what do they call the um uh, what do they call the sucker you know yeah, the, the you, fish or, yeah, yeah so you we were waiting for the person who's just gambling like an idiot to right. basically take their money. It's really right. the impatient one in, in on the table for the most part. They're like all like shark them. Yeah. yeah like, and like, I've, I've figured that out. And I've had times where, uh, you know, I've like stuck to it and been really good and disciplined, but you could be easily sitting there for like hours, mm-hmm. not getting to play a hand and you're just folding and folding and folding. And, and wait, I mean, hours sitting at a table and not actually getting to play mm-hmm. at all. So, is, you know, some, you know, people that did this, is what they do for a living. So I mean, that's what you call professional poker. That's crazy. Oh yeah. yeah, if you go, and they and, did okay. Yeah, yeah, make good money. Wow. Oh yeah, make really good money. If that's you're, crazy. if you, I mean, I don't think you should be able to consider yourself a professional poker player unless you can make a living. Yeah, off of, of course. <laughs> off of actually doing it. Otherwise, you're just a I'm sucker. A professional you're poker a sucker player. yourself. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> call yourself a professional yeah. poker player. You can't make but five grand a year. You're gonna say like, <laughs> nah, bro, you're a sucker. You're not the professional player. Yeah. Yeah, they and that's just it. They will they come in like, and I've talked to them. So they would t- would tell me things like this. Like so, here's like some strategies. They intentionally they intentionally will hit the tables. Like I've I've literally like gambled 24 hours like through the night like multiple times before of playing poker and stuff. And so I get a chance to meet and they the all the pr- the like the pros come in. They show up around like midnight or one. They're waiting for all the drunk people. Uh, all, all they're fatigued. They're yeah. waiting for all the. They're waiting for all the clubs to close and the drunks to come out mm-hmm. and just like you know give away their money. Yeah, willy nilly throw <laughs> throw them. They want to be in. The, they want to be the table for like an hour or so before to kind of work it, get in their flow and get, and get warmed up. See how the cards are flowing their way and stuff like that. And they're just patiently waiting for all those those sucker bets to come sit in. And and then they have rules like I'm once I make X amount of money for a night, I walk away mm-hmm. no matter what. No matter how hot I am at that time or like that, I the have a rule. The psychology of a of a professional uh, gambler has to be unique, right? Because I'm sure there's overall throughout the year, if you're good, you come out positive. Mm-hmm. But there's got to be periods of time within that year where you're so you're down, but you got to be okay and calm and not panic and you know try to like you know compensate type of deal. I would imagine. Yeah, no, I've, I mean I've shared this with my sports gambling before, like. I have rules and and like strategies towards betting. When I stick to them, I'm pretty damn successful. But you have to be disciplined and also have the balls to do this, right? So, if I'm betting, let's say, uh, just for for the, the analogy reasons, let's say a hundred dollars, and I lose, I got to be willing the next bet to go to two hundred dollars. When I lose again, I got to be willing to go to four hundred dollars. When I lose again, I got to be willing to go eight hundred dollars. When I lose eight hundred dollars, I got to be willing to go to sixteen hundred dollars. So every and if, and I'm sticking to mm. my rules on what I'm betting on, like statistically, if I'm constantly doubling what I'm willing to risk, then and and I finally hit. Let's say it takes three of those wrong guesses, and I and the, by the fourth one I finally hit. Well, that makes yeah, you up could for, be down for tons of money. Yeah, you might that. have to be able to go. You have to be able to go down a certain amount, which is why too I think like when you play games like yeah. craps, the fear gets based in there. off the yeah. and and, the, and I know there's books on this, right? So like. Uh, 
based off of what the the minimum table bet is, there's a certain amount of money that you should come in with. And I used to tell my friends that were like kind of like casual gamblers with like craps when we'd be playing together and be like, bro, you're so crazy. You come in with like $5,000 at this table. I've only got like, I only want to gamble a couple hundred dollars. I'm like, you're going to lose that because you have to be willing to take the losses. You got to be willing to go down. That room. Yeah, because when, you, uh. when the minimum bet is $25 and you come in with $150, the odds of you, I mean, then you're all your, then you're banking on. As soon as I get there, I'm gonna get some sort of a hot streak. Get so many turns. Yeah, you're not. You, you can't. You're not waiting for the ebb and flow, the natural ebb and flow of the game. You have to have enough. You have to be able to go deep enough to go through the the downturn and and the valley to in order to, to ride the to to ride the wave up or the peak. And so, you know, there is. There's like a, there's there's a mathematical formula to like how much you should come in to a minimum table mm -hmm. bet in order to be able to do that. Well, interesting. Well, since we're talking about gambling, this will be an easy transition. Do you guys know about the cocaine that was found in the in the White House? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah, who is who's responsible now? I mean, it's what's, like what's the latest? They, I mean, it's th just So here's here this is this is so funny. <laughs> they they ended the investigation because they couldn't figure out whose it was. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> we, we can't check the cameras. Oh, it's hey, such a mystery. Can I just can <laughs> I just say so something? Bullshit, dude. I, okay, name a building with more surveillance right. than the White House. Okay? How much bullshit can we be fed? You know the problem. I bet you, you, know, they, like, you know the problem is they have too many people doing cocaine and they can't figure out <laughs> yeah. who's that was. They're like, they go back to look at the cameras like, fuck, Steve was doing a line that day. Fucking yeah. Richard was doing everybody a line that day. Maria was doing it. Oh, everybody my. was here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we don't want everybody to get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or they found out and they called them in like, hey, we found out it was your cocaine. Here you go. Take it. Don't lose it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, this is hilarious. This is like when when Epstein, you know, is, he died and everybody's like, what happened? Like, this is such a mystery. This is one of the most, serve, I bet they have cameras in there that could tell you how many times you farted and, and they can't see who left cocaine in an area where people, this is crazy. Is, lies, there, is, there, a, is there a statistic, Andrew Doug, on um, what percentage of politicians do drugs? <laughs> well, how would you know? I mean, it, it would be like self-reported. You know, that, so, like, so that over, would over, that over, number then? No, like no, no politician. Wow, they're a politician is going to share that. But I'm sure there's been plenty of like biographies that have put been put out yeah. later on where someone talked about stuff. Like, you don't think that's like a stat we can figure I out? I don't think. I think it's an estimation, but I don't know. What I mean, do you What do you got, Doug? Uh, you know, it says many prominent politicians have turned to drugs or alcohol as stress management mechanisms. Yeah. Um, there's ten politicians linked to cocaine. Uh, but I mean, I would speculate that that's like, when you think of, uh, professional sports, politicians, like, uh, actor, Hollywood actors and actresses, I would think that politicians would be right up there with some of the highest drug of abuse. Course. I wouldn't be surprised. Everything from like trying to manage stress to or trying to access to sleep and just access, access and the people you, yeah, to, course. I mean. I think politicians are up there for any bad habit. Or just, <laughs> yeah. Just bad humans. I, I just don't think they're so the worst. best of the best. I don't think they have great moral character. No, no. Let's just put it that way. There's very few. They, they may exist, but yeah. uh, for me, I've, I remain skeptical yeah. now even I used more. to get into that bet or that argument with Brendan. When Brendan and I would talk about that, he would try and t say to me that there's like, I would be like, dude, wait, tell, sh there are no politicians that like are, are coming into this like with like, they did not become a, politic to, uh, a politician to- The angels don't get elected. Yeah, to, to do good for the world. Mm -hmm. Like, you you just got closed on whatever they're selling you, bro. That's what I would say. When you're me. in the business of trying to make everybody like you, uh, I, and you're good are, at it. you're not going to be And honest. you're good at it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're good at it. Like, you just got sold. That's all it is. It's just like, they're. I mean, they wouldn't uh, be a successful politician if they weren't good at convincing right. people you're that they're a not. professional manipulator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> exactly what yeah. you are. Yeah. You're, and that's why they say that politicians are just actors that weren't good enough, good looking enough enough to make it in Hollywood. Oh, is that a well, saying? You never heard that? No, I'm 100% not. 100% true. Well, well, they, there's, so, there's a lot of examples of that, right? At the highest level of actors that make it into the office, right? Even uh -huh. Zelensky was an uh, actor. It is. And yeah. so th this this cracks me up because it reminds me of like when, like they, it's like self-investigation. Like the FBI investigated themselves and found you know, no wrongdoing. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, the IRS <laughs> checked on themselves and it looks like everything they're doing is perfect. Like, all right, dude.
like who's investigating this cocaine in the White right. House? The right. people in the White House? Yeah. Right. It was know. like when you got to correct your own homework, you know what I'm saying? Like that. I, yeah. Remember, remember those days? Yeah. yeah. You go All right, to guys, grade and, your own yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, looks like I got an A+. plus. Do you guys remember that when you had to grade your own test? Did you yeah. always give yourself like one or two wrong of to make course, it realistic? Everybody did. Yeah. Everybody. Who did it? You know what I'm saying? And then you get, and you're really smart when you know that what teachers do that all the time. You're like, I'm not even going to fill in the answer. I'll just wait until I'm having to correct it. <laughs> fill in some of the answers then. Like, <laughs> Have you seen like the, um, I don't know if it's the uh, the Senate or like the House of Representatives, they're do, they're basically grilling uh, a lot of FBI right now. Like in and they're it, it's it's funny to me because it just looks like um, it's it's for public display, yep. you know. And it's like, oh, we're we're keeping them accountable, but like all they're doing is like, yeah, I don't, I'm not aware of that, or like I can't comment on that. And that's like all the answers you're gonna get, right? Oh. And then it's and, and then it's your senator just throwing all these like Listen. you know haymakers at them. And trying to sound like we're really getting them, and it, it's all just like it's like flagellation is what it reminds me of. Like, <laughs> but it's you know, not real. But it's not even real. Here's what no, I. There's no consequences. I'll tell you what I think. I think this very strongly. I would bet money on it. No way to prove it. But after September 11th, they passed laws. Uh, I mean, explicitly, where the government can oh, and does. It's now it's been established. Record every piece of electronic electronic communication. They can go through your emails. They can go through your searches. They could. All that stuff without judge, trial, or jury. So no warrant. They could do all that. Now, once that passed, I remember I was talking with a client of mine, and uh, we were talking about this, and he goes, you know what's going to happen with this? I said, what? He said, they're going to collect everything on all these politicians, and now they're going to be able to get them to do whatever they want. Because it's going to be very easy for them to be like, you sure? Because I got this. I got that. Yeah. You sure about it? You don't want it? And so it becomes the ultimate tool for manipulation. Because they have all the data. And think about it. If, everybody fo if they followed anybody around and recorded everything, they could put something together for pretty much anybody. Yeah. Especially if you're a politician. For yeah. sure. You know? So, well, I know. Yeah. It's yeah. correct. You know. <laughs> Along the lines yeah. of tools and manipulating that type of stuff, I actually wanted to ask all three of you this because um, you all have uh, teenagers, right? Um, have you? Do you guys talk to them or ask them like, what's happening with like school with like chat GPT and stuff like that. Like, are they, or do your kids talk about it or bring it up to you or do you hear yeah, anything? My oldest does. Uh-huh. So you do hear it. So yeah. So I talked to him about that and like, he knows of like some friends that have tried yep. to turn in homework using it. And I mean, sometimes they might get away with things, but then the teacher goes back over it and then they bring it up and they'll, they'll bring them in. They'll talk. So they're, I think um, at least the teachers are, are pretty aware of like the usage of it. And like, and so sometimes they'll actually take like some of those questions that they're trying to answer, or, like, like create like um, a paper out of, and yeah. they'll do it themselves and then check and they'll get like a very similar result. So then it's like a red flag. It's happening a lot in colleges, but the college students are smarter about how they prompt yeah. it and, and also put it, put, put it forward. They'll change it enough. Um, so that's what I'm hearing. So yeah. I, I I know of somebody who did. Yeah, at that level, I'm sure it's harder to detect. I know somebody who did the last half of their homework for a particular class almost all through Chad GPT yeah. and got a great grade and nobody knew. Really? Yeah. Wow. I do. Does Bree say anything? She doesn't really talk about it. I yeah. do think kids are trying to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to be. I yeah. mean, we're like a bunch of old fuddy duddies, and we use it. It's, you got to know that they're like they're super privy to all that stuff, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, what do you expect? I mean, I was trying to <laughs> get cheat codes on my uh, little calculator. You know, I was like. You know when you could like uh, save and store oh, formulas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I figured that out the first time. Like that's what I mean. Like did. when yeah. you're a kid like that, you're normally way ahead of us mm -hmm. on stuff like that. Like as soon as that stuff hit the market, I bet they were already playing. Like that's why I was wondering like how much your kids are like divulging and like how much of them are actually like already using it and not telling you. Like if you notice any of that stuff, like right. Because we, I felt like when it first hit, we were talking about it a lot, and there was like all this, like, oh, what are we going to do? And teachers are now going to back to pencil and writing in person and all this stuff like that, like getting rid of the the, the print, the printing out, like. But then it kind of went silent. I haven't heard, but yet I'm seeing it progress even more. So from my from my perspective of using it, it's getting better and better and more usage, and I'm seeing more more application for it. So I gotta think. This that reminds the, me of like yeah. a Olymp the Olympic Committee trying to catch uh, athletes who are you know. Yeah, it's yeah. like they first have to figure out what people are using before they get test for it. Yeah, and then it's always a like cat and mouse. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, I, do you guys remember? It's gonna continue to be that way. I mean, high school when we were obviously it was this was back analog right analog days, but I remember you know I had friends who would cheat. They would write 
they would write the answers on the bottom of their shoe. I had another buddy <laughs> oh, that yeah. I had another buddy who figured I've out seen that, yeah. the clear pens, you know, the pens with like the clear casing or whatever. Yeah. He figured out how to write really, really small on a piece of paper, roll it up and put it in the pen. And oh so you can literally look at it and then the pen- That's hilarious. Magnified it a little bit because oh of God. the plastic. That's like- It's brilliant. You deserve a good grade. Yeah, <laughs> that is you deserve, you deserve I've a seen good. a guy write all his answers with his like sunglasses. And I'm like, I can't believe the teacher didn't tell him to take his sunglasses Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, that's ridiculous. He has it all in the sunglasses. I feel like if it's a really good one and I was a teacher, I'd kind of be like, you know what? I'm not going to say anything about that. That was pretty good. Actually. <laughs> Bro. Right? Bro. Like an asshole. Like you're going to do like, okay. You yeah, know, you yeah, know, you're going to be all right. Done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that cre- that, you're going to be a politician sir. outside the box like yeah. that. You're going to be all right. Did I ever oh. tell you guys about the one yeah, politician, the making the one attempt I ever did at cheating when I was in school, yeah. the one attempt I did, I wrote, it's like an idiot. Right. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to write the formula on the palm of my hand. Yeah. Right? So I wrote it on the palm of my hand. And then the test comes, and I'm nervous because I'm cheating, so my head's sweating. Oh, and no. I open my head, and it's like all oh, smudged. Oh, like, smudge. fuck. <laughs> oh, no. I can't even cheat right. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what I wrote. Oh. Uh, yeah, I couldn't uh, read half of it. Oh, man. Because oh, it was God. all smudged. Do you, I mean, I, so I have almost 100% moved away from Google and used ChatGPT. Oh, really? Almost. Really? Every, yeah. Wow. wow. It took me yeah. a little bit of practice, right? And so now it's in my, on my phone is like, you know, when you open up, like, you know, Safari or whatever like that, it's, it, like right away when I go to open up the the website uh, for ChatGPT opens up now. And so I've just trained myself when I think I'm going to go Google search something. I'm like, wait a second. How would I prompt ChatGPT to get me what I'm looking for? And it, it's it's better. I, I should start doing that. Yeah, I it's better. used it a few times just to see what it would do. And then that was it. Like I abandoned it. Well, so. you know what? Google's turned into like such an ad machine that when you Google yeah. search a topic or some whatever, what you want to learn or read about, I have to first like scroll down the first 10 because the first 10 are all paid. ad. Yeah. They're paid to be up that high. And then I'm looking for the highest one that's not paid. And then I have to read it to see if it aligns with exactly what I'm asking. And sometimes it's the second or the third one. And so, but ChatGPT goes right to what I want. Did you hear about the guy he took? Because I guess there's, uh, what do they call plugins where you could, you could like yeah, modify yeah. or whatever? Uh-huh. Yeah. He made something and it's publicly available uh, through ChatGPT where you could take a picture of anybody. And a little bit of the a recording of their voice. Mm-hmm. So, and, and guys apparently are doing this with women. They'll take a picture of them, recording of their voice a little bit, and then it makes you an AI girlfriend. <laughs> so now it's you know the person. How creepy can you, t- you be? Yeah, and you <laughs> can talk guy, to them. You're like obsessing over this yes. girl. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And he Hi. demonstrated it with his own girlfriend. Bro, do we understand like how dangerous this is to society? That's like to do stuff creepy, like that, dude. bro. That's weird. Yeah, that's super creepy. It's wow. way super creepy. It's creepy and scary in the fact that like we already look at the, where where we're heading with like the the pornography and 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 <sighs> erectile dysfunction and boys like just locking themselves in the room like now they can basically build a digital version of the girl that they've been masturbating to for the last three wow. years like it's <laughs> wow. that's like that talks to them and it's, makes them extra bro this is real bad I know dude. this is like like every parent's gonna have to take the doors off of their kids like door off their bedrooms now I this is like a, wizardry if you think about it yeah where you to cut uh, somebody's hair and then this, oh. and then like, you know, like this is like that movie. Your girlfriend. <laughs> what was that movie? Weird oh, science. Yeah, weird science. Yeah, yeah it is weird science, yeah. dude. It's full circle. Yeah. That's, that's, every oh. that's, by the way, every teenage boy's dream is to be able to create his own girlfriend. Yeah, sure. Yeah. One like that. Would be now like, we made it real. Like amazing. this is not a good idea, yeah. everybody. Um, it's a terrible idea. So a terrible version of the AI. Have you, so you saw the um, uh, what, what's his name that had the song that came out, Drake. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, yeah, yeah. For the AI and the yeah. combo and the mashup. So they did a terrible, I'm like, oh no, there's this potential, right? So they had Johnny Cash uh, and singing Barbie Girl. Oh, come on. What? Yes, dude. And I'm like, oh, and it was like. <laughs> was it good? N- no, but it like, it, it was <laughs> awful, but it was like, literally sounded like his voice and he, he did it to, um, uh, I don't know if it was Walk the Line, Bro. but it was one of those songs. Bro, speaking like, of Barbie, so you know Barbie, the movie's out, right? Yeah. What's her name? Who? What's the girl's name that played Margot Robbie? Mm-hmm. Who plays Barbie? Yeah. Okay. Did you guys see what went viral on Twitter? No. With her? So, so some dude, I don't know, some guy got on there. First of all, internet guys are just or people are just ridiculous. He gets on there, and he posts a picture of her, and I can't, apparently there's a picture of her with no makeup or whatever. And he goes, she's mid at best. I don't know if you guys know what the term mid means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mid is like a slight, like you're yeah, not yeah. hot. You're like average. Yeah, yeah. She's mid at best, whatever. And it, <laughs> Margot right. Robbie, okay. You're and right. it created this huge uproar because all these dudes were on there agreeing. 
Oh wow! Yeah, and one I'm like, bunch of simp's. So yeah. hard, bro. These dude. are guys trying so Get hard. Get over yourself. Yeah. Dude. Oh, your yeah. nose is too pointy. She's or you're smoking whatever. hot. Yeah. I give me can't. A break. It's so and so. You got all these women defending her. Like she's like, what are you talking about? She's super hot. I'm like, why are we arguing over this? You know, every guy who said that is full of shit. Yeah, I mean, it, now you don't you can't believe anything online. Like half the stuff that people say or do online, I I shared bots. that. Well, they're just the things that are happening right now in the the younger generation was to for TikTok and just to go viral yeah. stuff is like I showed you guys that that clip. I think Andrew was telling me that that there, this has been a thing that's been going on for a while. I've never seen anybody do this. But like, you know, this older dude probably in his fifties or like that is sitting listening to music on his phone or he's got he's got his 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 uh his headphones in and the get kid walks over and just snips it. I know. Oh and just and, and it's, he's recording it for Those TikTok. Those kind of videos make me so angry. Oh, so mad. Why? Man. Why? And just and getting away just with to be it. Be a dick. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Oh man. You, and you want inside of you, you want like I want him to get his ass beat. Yeah. I I had a uh, another AI thing I wanted to ask you, but before we do, what are our partners today? Well, no, we? actually, let me go. Let me let me go there for a second. I just pulled up a study. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about Ned, uh, which is our hemp oil uh, company. But I pulled up a study. I think this is a pretty groundbreaking study in the world of cannabinoids. So we used to think for a long time, and it's, I think a lot of people still think this, that the THC, CBD, other cannabinoid content really is what determines whether or not somebody likes a strain or not. In the study, they found that that didn't make that big of a difference at all. What made the difference was terpenes. Interesting. Is that because that causes the flavor and the smell and all that more? That, Is that why? Com the combination of terpenes with cannabinoids seems to be what makes a strain feel sluggish, hmm. energetic, Oh, so not just anxious. feelings. It's other things, too. Okay. Yeah, like oh. the effects. The yeah. terpenes. They provide different characteristics? Yeah, like, so like someone will be like, oh, measurable. I like this strain because it gives me energy. And this strain of gives me makes me sleepy. And they think it's the THC and this and that. They're like, no, no, it's the terpenes. So that's so wild because that's been marketed the opposite for correct, so long. Correct. Forever, you, if you go to any cannabis club, right. uh, you know, you have, if it's high indica, they push it on the sleep. You know what I'm saying? If it's low, low, then it's going to be this. Or if it's a hybrid, it's a, like they- Right, been it's supposed to be balanced. Yeah, whatever. yeah. And, there, there were, and I remember, you know, I remember, there were certain strains that just make me now. Feel are there terrible. okay? So along those lines, are there are there more are there some parallels though that you know typically if it's high indica, it has these types of terpenes in it. Therefore, so it, it does. A I don't read that in the study, but I would, I would I would assume so. Yeah, I would imagine it somewhat aligns, or else that would have been thrown out a long time I, I would, ago, right? Exactly, there, because there's got to be some truth to higher. They're indicas. just doing the wrong correlation. Right. I, I would, yeah, I, I agree with that. But um, so what this points to is the. The you want the whole plant for the effect. So so Ned has hemp oil extract, and what they don't do is take out the CBD, take out the cannabinoids, isolate it. Here you go. It's the whole plant. You got the terpenes in there. You have all the cannabinoids, all of it together. And this is probably why the the, the feedback we get is I've never felt a CBD product before. This one I feel. Mm -hmm. It's all those things. It's you know it's interesting that you say this because it's like, can you think of a Anything found in nature that is healthier and better for us, isolated and concentrated or taken out from no. something, and that right. the whole version of it is not would not be healthier and better for us. Mm -mm. I can't think of anything. It's already balanced in the plant. Yeah, yeah you know what's weird is, uh, yeah, there's a lot of a there's a lot of uh, examples of that. Sugar is a good one. Yeah. Uh, fine sugar in nature usually paired with fiber. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Usually paired with fiber. You almost yeah, never slow find down the digestive process. Yeah, like, process. like, a, yeah. I brought like the sugar itself is is a. Is no, a, I brought the now that analogy up before. If you were to ha if you were to eat uh, the amount of sugar in sugar cane that is uh, compared to uh, what's in a soda, right? So the same amount of uh, sugar that's in a soda in its natural form in sugar cane, it would be it's like six to eight feet of sugar cane. Yeah. <laughs> The amount sure. one, the amount of calories you would burn chewing that would, would probably <laughs> right. cancel and out the fiber. The, yeah, and the amount of fiber that you get, like it would be, it would negate it. So now I like it when people bring up honey because like, well, what about well, honey? Yeah. Honey's a pure sugar source. You got to get through bees, homie. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. come and like the that. The bees need it because you know they, they have to move rapidly all yeah. day long. Like so, that was the other thing is like uh, like hummingbirds and dew. Like and there's like sugar, sure. you know, from what they get that instant hit because they're. 
their acceleration, and it, but it's in short spurts. It's like all these sprints. Yeah, you think well, about how that all kind and of to pairs. address honey different too. Like we don't find we don't find honey the way it was found in nature either. Like we actually put them in a box and we force them uh, to yeah. create all these yeah. honeycombs yeah. so we can get it in bulk. And, and you, you can actually buy a jar of honey. If, yeah, if you were to go uh, knock it off a tree somewhere, and they, you wouldn't find nearly as much no, actual and, honey inside. No, what there they typically a, do is eat the honeycomb. Yeah, they're not taking the honey off. They're yeah, eating right. the honeycomb. You got to climb some tree. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have Dude. some balls to fight off some bees. Or we some manipulated shit. all fruit uh, to to produce these like bigger, yeah. uh, you know, more fructose, like you know, yep. driven type of uh, product. But it was like always like smaller, more bitter, a lot yeah. more fiber. Yeah. So like again, if you take, you could extract the cannabinoid, concentrate the shit out of it, and get yourself stoned as hell. Uh, but in in nature, it's typically found with lots of other things that balance things out. Um, and uh, the cannabinoids are like this uh, in the hemp plant. If you just take CBD, studies will show this, CBD by itself has some effects. CBD in combination with other cannabinoids and terpenes found in the hemp plant, now you see, they call it the entourage effect. Now you see the anti-inflammatory effects are more are, are pronounced, the health effects are more pronounced, the sleep effects more pronounced. All the things that, like for example, CBD is is supposed to do. Well, now back to the AI conversation, and it aligns with us talking about food and nutrition too. Because <clears throat> have you guys seen the the new AI tool to actually look at food and be able to calculate everything? No. No. What? Yeah, yeah. Look that's at that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be. What do you mean, like a picture, and that's it? Yes. <gasps> and now be able to uh, macros, calories, wow. everything. That's so that's I forget the name of the the maybe nutrition Andrew coaches or Doug can look up that. AI tool that can that's calculate. Easy. Calculate. That's going to be very valuable. That's going to be super. Imagine when you think of like wearables, like Aura and stuff like that, that have become really, really good and, and, and relatively accurate to your calorie expenditure, what you're doing. And then now to be able to potentially just like screenshot, you can, you pair that software together and like we're really close to getting to this thing to where you're like real time can look down at your phone and be like, oh, I'm plus 500 calories right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm down 250 calories. Like, be real time be well, able to see where you're fuel yourself with the perfect dose of, yeah you know or you're you're you're, nutrients you're down 20 else. grams of protein for the day right. or you're on track to hit wow. your like we're i mean that's here that's like right around the corner are you going to be able to get one of these tools that is tracking all your stuff real time you're able to just simply screen take a picture of the food you're about to consume and then it actually calculate all of it. Oh, there it is. Single cool. photo calorie tracking. It's called Snap Calorie? Yeah. Wow. yeah. So wow. it uses AI to estimate the caloric content of food from photos. Wow. It's going to get even more. And then it's going to get even more. That's what I mean. It, this is where it's yeah, at right now. Yeah. Like in a year's time, this thing is going to be not only even more accurate, macro breakdown, and then you're going to be Look, able to- at some point, and this is where like the nerd in me gets excited. At some point, you'll have a device that's taking your bodies. It's measuring things from your body. Body, and then it's telling you what is probably the best thing to eat and how your body's yeah. reacting and say, so, you know, today you should probably eat a little more of this, have a little bit of that. We're noticing this marker yeah. going up, this marker going down. Oh, your blood sugar is this. You need to eat more of that. And then literally it'll tell you on a day by day, minute by minute basis, right. water, food, macros based off of goals. Here's the hot responding. take on that. Here's the hot take on that. We're going to, we're right around the corner from all that and we're going to be fatter. Probably. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to listen to that shit. Isn't that wild? I know. Uh, really like, Shut up. Yeah. It's, <laughs> how, Stop nagging me. Literally, chew on that for a minute. Like, yeah. we, it's going to be that awesome, that accurate, that like, like that simple to know why you are not in shape where you are or why you're losing body fat or you're not or... You we're gonna know. Like there's no gonna be longer pretty too pretty precise, right? So so here's and something. And we're else. gonna be fatter. So there was this was a while yes, ago. Adam so, finally pessimistic. I know. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> no, so finally. so so I'm not this is just me uh, spitballing here, but there's they already have this technology. This was something they had maybe a few years ago where they could do something to your tongue with an electric current and make foods yeah. and create salty, sweet like sensations. Yeah. Okay, so Oh, now you right. got the so average. You enjoy the food, but it's not uh, providing those. That's uh, right. Now you got wow. somebody who's like, it's telling you what to eat, wow. and it'll just make whatever you eat palatable. 
you'll take a bite of the vegetable. That's, and like, mm, that's ridiculous. Bacon, you know, yeah. whatever. I mean, yeah. that would be cool science. If we can make my broccoli taste like uh, chocolate chip cookies, that would be <laughs> fucking rad. Yeah, now you, now, now. Imagine if we do get to that place, that science, where what's we can actually. What's that going to do to your serotonin pro, and like all these We can actually program, yeah, you're right. You that, know, like that might Of course, there, will be, there probably will be some, you know what? You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're Justin, spot on. Let's go conspiracy theory now. Right? Yeah. Ready yeah, for this? Now they're going to feed you bugs and shit and they're going to be happy about it. Now they're like, it doesn't matter. Eat your government allotment of cockroach. You think you'll it's be like happy a about it. Oh, yeah. You'll own oh. nothing. Yeah. You eat bugs. Like what else? Here like, comes your yeah. box of government allotted nutrition. You know, carbon neutral. Oh, whatever. thank you. What, oh, it, what, it, like what an interesting it speculation, though. What <laughs> an hilarious. interesting speculation, though, on your part, Justin. Like uh, that. Like yes, we're not far from like that being like a potential reality. Like, could you imagine like actually making your broccoli taste like chocolate chip cookies? But then what is that going to do for things like serotonin and all, all the other things that are affected when you get these these pleasure signals from eating those pleasurable type of foods? It's like confuse the hell out of your body. I, right? So yeah. what could – what? there's always like some negative outcome that you don't foresee that well, happens. It, are we going to get to the point where you're going to be able to push a button to make yourself uh, like all of a sudden have fuzzy feelings for your partner again or whatever? Mm. Like, oh, man, I really – Beep! I like you again. Cool. Oh. Let's be yeah. Let's let's be awesome. Uh, I don't know, man. It's gonna be a weird uh, future hmm. where we can manipulate ourselves. But I think each time we do, we're gonna realize that there's a there's the other side. To yeah, it's that. like yeah. a never ending. Right. Yeah, it's a it's like a black hole. I don't. That's what I think at least. Yeah. yeah. Be, yeah anyway. Do your um do your uh, ad commercial right here right because we have this today anyways and I actually been meaning to ask you guys uh because it's still very consistent for us at our house is Max eats Magic Spoon. Uh, almost every day, but he eats it dry. So I don't know if like you guys as kids are consistently using it or They're not. Dry but- cereal eaters too, which freaks me out. Like I don't understand. I was it. never like, that. I was always like all the milk. Like let's put it in there. Never been a dry cereal I was, eater. I was a dry cereal. Eater. You were. Yeah. What about you, Doug? Sometimes, really. Yeah, but I do prefer milk. Yeah, I've never, I've never been a dry cereal eater. Max, some dry, some cereals are delicious. He bro. loves yeah. Magic Spoon like that. That's a snack. I'm not a fan of that, bro. He's eating high he, protein. A- no, that's. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very pro that. Like because what I don't like. So his, if it's not that, then he'll go to like waffle. He loves waffles, right? So that's been like his. We have these like gluten free, higher protein waffles, which is, I guess, a, a lesser evil. But I mean, that's basically fucking glorified cake for right. breakfast, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You know, so. I'm not a fan of him, and he's not a huge fan of eggs and stuff like that. And you know, in Katrina's defense of in the morning, in a hurry, and stuff like that. By the way, Magic Spoon is everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Now. I see every night. retail everywhere. I was in Knob Hill, and it was just where we go all the time, just grocery store. I didn't realize they were like on the shelves. Like. I think they're. So I remember when they hit Target, and that was a big deal. And then I think Walmart was next. But I mean, I was up in uh, Truckee grocery stopping at like Save Mart or something, and it's in Save. It's in pretty much every major grocery store. Now, what that now. tells me is that people are valuing uh, protein intake enough to Tell- spend the money on a box of Magic Spoon, but also that it tastes good enough to win over the average person. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in these major oh, yeah. uh, you know, outlets. They wouldn't be competing. Wouldn't. It tells me we missed the fucking book. And we boat, we could have been rich. That's what it tells I me. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish we were in a place Always where we were in sight. Yeah. I mean, we all, uh, I mean, we, we were all pro. We just didn't have the money at the time when we first started talking to the Magic Spoon. I've, I mean, they, they have to be, I mean, the last time I checked, they were worth a ton of money and, and on the on the, on the the rise. They'll and get if, bought out, I think, by a big uh, big company. They have to, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the move with that. You know what's so funny to me is like how the terrible like the, the box, yeah. the boxes are so like cheesy like the the cartoon. I like them. I feel Do like, you really? Yeah, they look like somebody on mushrooms made them. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's exactly it reminds why. me of the old Twix and uh, Toucan Sam and yeah. all that kind of. So they're trying to kind of. I don't even think back. they're that good. I think they're terrible. Well, they're really? Not. They're like, I, I think I love them. Weird I, looking. I, people. I think I, I would love to find the box out. would get uh, my. Attention. I feel like one of the the uh, the founders like they let their kid draw the fucking pictures. No, <laughs> dude, <laughs> that's too far, bro. I it would totally get my attention because it looks like it looks like you got a bunch of. Like uh, graphic designers together had them eat some psychedelics and then said, "Now make a cereal box." That's so okay, I'll like give me. you. I'll give you that. That may and maybe that was like this great strategy was sure. like instead of looking like every other cereal box, it does have kind of. I think when you, I look at the cereal aisle, they all do have a kind of similar sure. look. And Magic Spoon does not look like no. like any of them, in my opinion. No. I, think I used to like. Ma- I used to like cereal boxes that because when I was a had kid, games. We, yes, we, you never had. You didn't have a phone when we were kids. Yeah. But you you really appreciated a cereal box that had something that you could look at, read, or do on the back. So you turn yeah. around, oh, crossword mm-hmm. puzzle, you know, while you eat your cereal. Did I tell you guys that's been a big hack for um, us recently? I think I might have shared this, that we started doing this with Max. 
like there, there was a time when like right the, the before dinner dinner time was kind of like his like iPad time that we we let him do that and it was one of our ways to get him to kind of sit still and he he like plays like teaching games while he's also uh, eating. But we've now um, when we left this last school they they used to send him with all these like uh, homework this homework that he used to lo he loved to do like where he's tracing and learning letters even learning math and colors and all this stuff. And Katrina uh, photocopied all of them. So we have like duplicates of all mm. of them. And then we, when we eat now, because we just started doing this, we weren't doing this when he was a little bit younger, of like organizing family dinner time, like all of us together sitting mm -hmm. at the table, uh, no phones or iPads. We, so he has something to kind of do. He absolutely loves like working on the schoolwork at the same time of eating. It's been like a really nice little hack. Dinner for time for us has become a uh, story time uh, hosted by dad. <laughs> apparently I told my son, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I can tell pretty good stories, I think, but now that's all he wants. So now at dinner time, every time we eat dinner, tell me a story. Okay. And tell me another story. So oh, I really is story all the time. Oh, that's funny. <sighs> so I'm just making up and I always inject some kind of a lesson uh -huh. in them. And then every once in a while I'll put in a lesson that the older kids or Jessica will get that he won't. So it'll make it real funny. Like, you know, kind of like, you know, like how Shrek did that with yeah. their oh, animation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll do something like that. And my wife will look at me like, he's going to figure this out. Right. right. It's like over his head. You don't head. get it now yeah. though. What yeah, are they yeah. called? Like, like adult humor? Public, yes. public yeah. service announcements. Like that's what mine feels like when I'm like a talking public to my, service announcement. Yeah. <laughs> like we're at a dinner table. I'm always like, I feel like I have to like uh, have a moral lesson, you know, that we talk about and discuss always happens, but it always feels like the end of a GI Joe episode where it's just like, <laughs> you know, always the help an old know. lady cross the street or, you know, whatever it is. Like, it's like, you're just reiterating these things that like nobody's teaching them anymore. It's just like, like basic things, like, you know, how to be, you know, a, a man and how to do things the right way and all this stuff. So it's like, I just use that time because you have them captivated. It's like, I have them right here, right now. Right, Let's right. like make sure they're going to be moral, good human beings. Now, are you guys consistent? with dinner same time uh, everybody yeah. so you are yeah, like that's that. a big deal it's now just... are, are you even with the gap with the kids yeah oh so, so oh, that's a big deal so the, everybody... that's the only time we all get together yeah consistently yeah i yeah. mean if you don't do that it's we're not all going to be together very often yeah yeah you have to do it no, I you agree. have to I, I would love to do breakfast it, just, it would never work I would oh, so oh, breakfast that's, that's, great, that's, that's impossible yeah. that's hard because everyone's on, yeah everyone's on different schedules at that point but yeah. once school work is over it's easier to do saturdays manage, like, we uh, do that but six o'clock thing oh even it. if my even if one of my older kids yeah ate, you're right saturdays and sundays, saturdays, 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 saturdays we'll, we'll get that yeah but even if one of my older kids ate like i already ate that oh you still got to come sit at the dinner table and they just sit there while we all eat because otherwise we don't hang out we don't see each other so uh the shout out today this is a good one. Yeah. yeah. Our our boy who came in here the other day, yeah. Remy. Yeah. Re so his his uh Instagram is Remy the Rockstar. So he's a two-time Purple Heart recipient. There was a movie, The Outpost, made out of him and his uh, you know, the the people that he served with, and he was a caller um on the podcast once. That's how we kind of met him, invited him down, he brought his boys. Really cool guy, super smart, obviously a badass, also a PhD. He teaches at Stanford? Stanford. It was uh -huh. Stanford. Yeah. yeah. Really great guy. So check him out. No, no, really, really cool. He actually the uh went to the Park City house for his bachelor party. That's right. And was just like raving about how uh, one, how cool the house was. And then also for people that don't know, like we have Courtney, who's running that for us, Justin's wife, it has created like this uh all the things that all of us do when we go there and it seems to be like one of the hottest things for people that go there they uh, if you, you actually check the places out. yeah if you go check out all the foods and drinks and the things that we talk about to do uh out there the people that have followed that and he's like i literally did that every day like it pulled from your guys's list and like everybody was that he said that he took for his bachelor party was so impressed because it was like they thought he like planned it all out <laughs> <laughs> you know built in itinerary yeah, yeah 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 so he said he, he said he gave himself up and he said that we had it we, oh, yeah. we had it there it's, but it's pretty much booked up but there's some openings so if actually august is the is we are we're light every it's busy a lot so it's mindpumpparkcity.com we yep. can go and check yep. it out organifi is a company that makes organic performance enhancing muscle building recovery boosting and health promoting supplements one of my favorites is peak power this is a pre-workout it's all natural it does have caffeine but it also has other botanicals that enhance the effects of caffeine balance it out to give you a long lasting euphoric high while you work out. Great for performance. Go check them out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mind pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show. 
Our first caller is Riley from Texas. Riley, how's it going? How can we help you? Hi, y'all. How are y'all doing? We're doing good. Good, good. Good, good. Um, I just want to say thank you guys for all the content you put out there. I've been listening for like two or three years now, and um, y'all's advice has just really helped me out in the gym and in life. So just want to say that first. Awesome. Thank you. Sweet. How can we help you? Um, okay. So I'm just going to read off my question here. Um, so I've been lifting since I was a kid, basically, and I love to lift heavy. I love power lifting kind of style um, of training. However, I've decided to try out for some pro cheer slash dance teams. Um, so I've been noticing that my training is making me very sore and stiff. Um, which is negatively impacting my dance training because obviously we need to be very flexible, fluid. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of just kind of stuck on where to go with my training. I want to lose some body fat. I, I need to lose some body fat for auditions. And I love to lift heavy, but I don't want to be sore all the time. So I didn't know if y'all have any advice for me. What's, wow. what's our, what's our uh, time frame look like with all this? So uh, my first audition is in October. So oh, okay. have a look. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now now what is your what is the dance training look like now leading into it? Are you practicing with the other people trying out or is this all on your own? Like what does that look like? Yeah, kind of um with other people. There's just all the teams I live in the Dallas area, they all host different classes that you just drop in and take classes. Okay. And just, yeah. Well, first off, I got to comment on something. You've been working out with weights since you were, it says up here, 12 or 13. Yeah. That's yeah, phenomenal. my dad's a football wow. coach, so I've been in the gym with him since I was little. Oh, yeah. you got a good dad. I love it, man. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is this is actually kind of cool because you have, you, you probably have uh, a really good strength base and muscle base. You've been working out for a while. Your dad's a coach, kind of knows what he's doing. I see up here yeah. you're... Squat is 210, your deadlift 215. Maybe Doug can scroll down a little bit. What is that? 135. What is that? Your bench? Yeah. Wow. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. And wow. you're, and you're, <laughs> you're wrong. And you're 411? Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay. So here's yeah. what you got to do because what you're describing with your tryouts and what you need to do, there's definitely skill as a uh, student, excuse me, strength is definitely a component, but you got that. You've got yeah. more than enough strength to do that. What you need to develop is the skill. Mm hmm. So you're, you should not be doing much strength training at all. It mm -hmm. should be almost primarily practicing the techniques and skills required for the tryout. Yeah. So if you do okay. any strength training at all, yeah. I would do yeah, like, it's a more week. supplemental. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like once a week, right? Okay. Once a week or maps 15, either one. So yeah. either one of those, but, and then even when you do strength training, uh, this is opposite advice that we normally give people of like really pushing the weight and trying to get stronger. It's like, I'm just. Uh, I think moderate intensity, full range of motion is where I'm focusing. Yep. And and you, like I said, you could either go one day a week like a MAPS anabolic type of protocol or our MAPS 15 is also, I think, a good program for what you're doing. But to Sal's point, most all the focus here is on the is on the dance. Like yeah. That's where everything should be centered around and in increasing the frequency of that. So if you're already practicing with them, then instead of going and lifting weights on two or three more days a week, I would actually tell you to practice more of the moves and more of the flexibility. Stuff you got the strength, you know, because yeah, yeah, somebody your age doing something base. like this, mm -hmm. you would have to, it would be like a combination, like skill, strength. Sometimes people have the skill, but they don't have the strength, totally different. In your yeah. case, uh, if you could do, if you could take a class that really teaches you and practices the skills like four days a week or three days a week, that would be ideal. And then one day okay. a week I would lift and and your lifting should be like four compound lift type uh, of a workout, kind of basic, just kind of maintaining your strength and that's mm -hmm. it. But just, if you just focus on the skill and stop trying to build muscle and strength right now, you're going to get there. If you try to do both, it's going to be really hard. Okay. So then with losing body fat, do I need to focus in on my diet a lot more than a little bit? That, that's where, yeah, that's where the leaning out's going to come from more than anything else. Don't try and burn it off. Like literally just okay. re reduce calories probably a little bit, but only uh, not too dramatic either because I, you want to support what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're training for a mm -hmm. sport right, in a sense, right? So that you want to make sure that you're fed and taken care of and stuff well, like that. Well, what position are you trying to do? You're 4'11", so you're trying to be a flyer or you want to be a base? Like what, what are you looking to do in this competition? 
Well, so in pro cheer, it's actually, it's just all dancing. So okay. I used to be a flyer, of course, but yeah, now well, it's, it's just... Mm -hmm. Okay. Sal was a flyer. Sal yeah. knows. He used to be a mascot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, look, these guys yeah. don't know what's going on. Yeah. I know all about you yeah. for some no. reason. Uh, so, okay. So, look. Um, Adam was a base. <laughs> cutting your calories is important. Don't cut them too much because you're going to lose uh, athletic performance and strength. It says up here your body fat percentage is already great. Yeah. You're at 23%. Honestly, I think if you like, what was your workouts like before you started training for this sport? What did, what did it look like, including cardio or whatever? Was it just lifting? Yeah. What were you doing before? She used to be a gymnast, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so all the sports growing up, and then, but like recently in adult life, uh, most recently I've been running Maps Aesthetic, and then I just do, my cardio is just like walking my dogs. Okay, so. Yeah, so if you did like four days a week of of this specific type of training, cheer training, maybe mm -hmm. one day a week of lifting, um, I think you probably could cut your calories a little bit, and you'll still get leaner. Because okay. yeah, because that kind of training is pretty. It's like real calorie burning, and you know yeah, part of it. Yeah. And part of what you're trying to do is you're trying to get leaner. You're also trying to get smaller because you're mm -hmm. supporting your body weight with a lot of these moves. So it's not just about getting getting leaner. It's also about kind of getting smaller. So a little bit of a calorie deficit's okay, but don't go too far because uh, then you're going to lose uh, performance. But yeah, with your gymnastics background, strength background, yeah. just practice the skill and you'll get there. No I problem. I think, yeah, all that is great advice. I, I do think too, since it's October, like uh, the MAPS 15 suggestion, at least like, you know, rotating that in uh, to, to help kind of support and, and keep and maintain those strength gains that you have acquired um, would be a great, just have to be disciplined with make, making sure you, you really stick to that formula and like that time frame. And, and MAPS 15, what I love about the way we designed it is you could actually make it instead of a six day a week you can make it a three-day a week also a program and just pair the the two workouts right. together so if, it, if it's more if it's more convenient to spread it out over six which i think is ideal that's fine but if there's if you have like let's say you're you got cheer stuff going or uh, dance stuff going on practice wise and just focus on that and then maybe pair a day together yeah. you could do it that way but too, you know so. right let me ask you this what are the most challenging aspects of uh what you're trying to do like when you're going in you're practicing the routine you're going to train audition mm -hmm. What's the, what are the hardest things for you? Um, like the kicks and like when we anything that's like a lot of like arching <laughs> like your back, yeah. like my back is so tight from lifting that it's like that's just tough. So You're, if you listen, <laughs> like here's the deal: the getting smaller is going to help. It, out. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's us, it, this is all skill. This is yeah. one hundred percent skill. Zero percent you needing to get stronger or more fit. So. If you're yeah. doing, if you're practicing with them four days a week and you want to add more, I would add more practice, practicing these techniques and the skill of all these moves and stuff like that. Cause you've got the strength, you've got gymnastics background. This is not mm -hmm. about becoming more fit. This is literally about just learning how to do the movement better. So if you're going to do more okay. quote unquote workouts, I would center them completely around perfecting the skills that you have that you're challenged with. I don't think it would hurt her either to do a little bit of cardio too. I imagine there's some sort of cardiovascular from demand. practicing. She's yeah. going to get well. I mean, yeah. If if you're not practicing, right? That that's yeah. at all times. If you have free time, the the direction I would push you is into practicing the moves that you said are the most challenging and, and getting good at that, right? But if there's a okay. day when you're not doing that, uh, I think doing some, you know steady state type of cardio would not be a bad thing either. Yeah, but that's not what's holding her back. It's all technique here. I mean, no, but you said something that I think is very true. It, it would not hurt her to get smaller. I mean, just, just not just lighter, but smaller too is not, is, is for what we're trying to accomplish. Right. But my point, plenty of room. but my point, and that's when I thought she was doing, uh, the other type of cheer with this, like, okay, 411, 23% body fat. Uh, this is going to be like what you just said. Uh, you, you could get smaller, but if you don't have the technique, it don't matter. And I yeah. think you're going to get a little smaller anyway just from practicing it. So I wouldn't focus on getting smaller because here's what's going to happen if you do that, Riley. You're going to go too far. You'll go too far. That'll become the primary focus. You're not going to fuel yourself enough. You'll lose your period. Hormone balance imbalances will start to happen. I, I Just practice the skill and you'll be totally fine. You have the strength to do all the stuff you just mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. I think if you just practice the techniques a lot, you're going to get plenty of workouts and if this is important to you, you really want to make the team, that's the, the, the most likely way that you're going to make the team. Okay. All right. Good luck. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, you got it. All Thanks right. for calling in. Okay. All right. Dude, she's so like ahead. 
I know. of everybody. Yeah. Well, lifting her, her weights base for that long. Is, is yeah already established. I mean, and, I mean, she could technically not lift any weights because like, it's not even like I'm going to promote like mobility and all. She's got a gymnastic background. She's got like, everything. She's got it all set and dialed. So yeah, really, it's just like you know maintaining that leading up to it and improving and in, in, uh, adding more skill into the. Yeah, mix. and you, you just said it, Adam. She could lose a lot of strength. She'd be fine. Yeah, she's already strong as hell. Yeah, no, so. that's right. I mean, you, she literally from now until then could like stop. Not that I would tell her to stop. But she totally could and be fine. Stop lifting weights and just become obsessive about sure. the dance routine and all yeah. the moves and yep. just doing that and doing mm -hmm. that and doing that and doing that. And she's not gonna like she's not gonna go from a two ten squat all of a sudden where she can't do her body weight squat or no, something. You no, know? So not she's gonna, she's strong. You know, not totally that. awesome. Our next caller is Peyton from West Virginia. Peyton, what's happening? How can we help you? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Um, I wrote some some stuff down because I forget easily, so just bear with me, but. Um, been listening for about a year or two, really big fan. Obviously, I love you guys talking about nutrition and lifting, but um, I really like when you guys talk about your personal family lives. It just like listening to you guys talk about families and stuff just makes me want to be a dad and everything right now. And I'm at like 23 years old, so. <laughs> oh, awesome. But um, yeah. some background on me, um, 23 years old, obviously, six feet tall, currently 108 pounds. I'm assuming I'm around, probably right around 10, 10 body fat. I haven't officially like got it measured, but been lifting for years now, uh, just because from sports, from high school and everything. But around COVID, I really started taking the nutritional and supplemental side pretty seriously. So, and then I lost a bunch of weight. I was at about like, probably like 185 to 190, got down to like 160 pounds. And I thought I was in really good shape. I was like super skinny, super lean. But then looking back on it now, I'm like, dude, I was like a, a straight skeleton. So, um, start last fall, I started, I bulked up, started actually taking creatine then. And then got up to, um, right around February, I got up to about 208 pounds. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, I know. Um, pretty intense. I probably put on a little bit more fat than I wanted to. I was still kind of lean. I was pretty good still with my diet. But then I cut back down and I'm 180 pounds um, at the end of June. On June 30th, I was 180 pounds. So I'm in the best shape of my life. Obviously, I don't think so. Um, I, body dysmorphia still kicks in and everything. But I just want to start, uh, talk about like kind of like the mental side of uh, fitness and nutrition. So when I first started bulking up and I'm putting on size and muscle and everything, um, I was really pushing myself hard, training till failure, uh, drop sets, super sets a lot. Um, just every single lift, I just wanted to feel that burn because I just loved absolutely feeling that. So um, I've been listening to you guys talk about how this probably isn't the most efficient pushing till failure on every single set. So I just wanted to see what, like the first step is to realizing that that's not the answer. And then like, or if there's like a way to push the failure without like overtraining and everything. So yeah. that's kind of like the main question about the fitness part. Pey Peyton, you're a moose. Yeah, you, yeah. Whatever link you sent us, I think those are the pictures of when you bulked up. Uh, you, would you play yes. football? Did you play football in high school? I did not play football. I played into my freshman and then I played basketball, baseball, and then I actually ran cross country. So okay, yeah, dude, you yeah. got you got you were lean. At yeah, 208. I would say the mm -hmm. body fat you think you put on that was too much is not too much. No, I think you're uh, doing fine, bro. And, and the fact that you got that big at your age, uh, going to failure with drop sets and all that shit, you got good genetics. Yeah, because uh, that is yeah. too much. That is too that's much intensity. How do you move away from okay. that? Okay, so that's a challenge, and that's a that's a continual challenge as you stay yeah. on this path and on this journey. The best, the best metric to measure, not perfect, but the best one to measure is our objective metrics. The mirror okay. is never objective. The mirror always is subjective. So yes. you could try to make it as objective as you want, but it's a kind of a tough one. Um, but but objective measure would be like your strength. Follow Matt's power lift, bro. Yeah, Matt's power lift, would Matt's anabolic. Matt's power lift would be great for him because he's measuring that, right? Yeah. You're, what you're tracking that, the whole point of that is designed okay. for you to get stronger and and then going yeah. and then going to bulk. Yeah, feed your so go back on the bulk. Um yeah. and fall. So those pictures I actually sent you guys, that was probably when I was leaning out on my cut. I didn't show you pictures of what my full bulk was, but okay. I was still kind of I was that lean, but the right those pictures I just sent you guys, that was full cut now, obviously, not before I was when I was skinny slash lean. So okay. yeah, I think you look better filled out for sure. I mean you you, okay. you, you yeah. still look you look plenty lean in the healthy. Think, yeah. Yeah. No, you look you look okay. good, bro. Yeah. I mean Okay. Here's here's the thing too, right? So and you got great results and you were training to failure. Like, I mean, this is yeah. you're you're literally uh 
talking about what all of us did. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were the same thing in our early 20s, <laughs> trained the same way. And and here's the yeah. thing, and you've probably heard us say this because you've been listening to the show for a long time, is that you, you think that the more you put into it, the harder you go, the more the results are going to be because that is like how almost everything else in life works. It, it's not. Yes, it's, that's exactly. It, yeah. It's it's not that way with physiology. It's not that way with nutrition and yeah. training. It's not. It's not. The harder you go, the more you do. The more results, the better you're going to be. It's there is a very yeah. there's a sweet spot, and that's unique to everybody. So you know, even though we're giving you advice here, you know, it's going to be different from per each person. You've got to kind of figure that out. A great a great test of this is to be true to a whole program. I would tell you, all right, Peyton, just trust okay. the process. Follow one of these programs and never go to failure. Watch what happens in three okay. months. You know, do not yeah. always stop to with two in the tank. Always allow yourself. It doesn't mean you're not trying to add weight to the bar. Every time you go back to the gym the next day and you're, or the next time you're hitting chest, it's like, okay, last week I was doing this. Let's try and increase by a couple pounds and see if I can do that. Yeah. But get, get rid of the failure. Get rid of the, I need my buddy to come over and spot me for the last rep or two and train through a whole program that way and watch what happens. You'll be surprised. Okay. Yeah. All for, right. For sure. I think All right. You, awesome. You're going to crush if you do that. Your, your, your body's going to respond. If you responded as well as you already have at your age right. with what you were doing, you're going to respond yeah. really, really well. Um, and I, I like, I mean, I like focusing on strength because it's hard to overdo it, underdo it, you know, and, and mess up on strength. Yeah. And, and with nutrition, you don't, I, I read up here, I'm reading in your comment here that when you were bulking, you were eating until you felt sick to your stomach. You don't need to do that. You really don't need to do that <laughs> in order to see progress. Yeah. Um, and then, back, you know, and back to what Adam was saying about hard, redefine hard. Everybody thinks hard means grueling. Hard just means challenging. Yeah. And oftentimes, yeah. oftentimes, especially with someone who has a hard work mentality, harder for that person means smarter yeah. because they just want to go, yeah. hard. they just want to make it grueling. So it's not necessarily harder in the sense that it hurts more. It's hard in the sense that it's more challenging for you to do it in a smart way. So if you redefine it that way, it'll help you. Yeah. Sometimes you need to okay. throttle the intensity and you need to you know get after it. Sometimes you need to just focus and throttle more on the discipline of actually doing what's right for your body in order to get results. So, you know, it, that's just yeah. like a totally different mentality. And this is too, you're, you're sort of the example of like, if somebody were to ask us in hindsight, like how we would go back to a totally. 20 year, year old self, what we would tell ourselves, like you have that opportunity yeah. right now to shift and, and completely do things in a way that's beneficial. Yeah. Earlier than we did. Right. Way yeah. Earlier. Oh man. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so you're yeah, you're sense. in a great spot, dude. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. All right. And then just one last question again, kind of with the mental side, but this is more with the nutrition and it has to do with uh, cheat days. So I'm very consistent in like my diet throughout the week, like getting like 200, 250 grams of protein a day, enough fat. Um, and then if I need to cut weight, calorie deficit, uh, calorie surplus for bulk. But then when the weekend hits, it's like a completely different story. Um, I'm still young and I'm usually consuming alcohol and then even when I go on vacation, that's whenever I'm like away from my diet the whole time. I just want to know how much like alcohol, like a couple of beers on the weekend is affecting that or anything. You're, you're overthinking it. Yeah. Peyton, you're okay. overthinking it, bro. It's, listen, okay. listen, when you're in your forties, you're not going to look back and be like, man, I shouldn't, I should not have enjoyed <laughs> myself. Be so straight <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. don't go binge drinking. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> yeah, don't, right. Don't do dumb stuff like yeah. That. Don't do stupid yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but I think you, you look like you got a good head on your shoulders. But yeah, man, okay. you know, okay. On the weekends, you, you just enjoy yourself, hang out with your friends. It becomes about the connection. Yeah. If it becomes about the alcohol, well, now you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you're out okay, hanging out, sense. yeah, you're enjoying yourself. Like, no, that don't trade that for being perfect with your, it's a stupid trade. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're not going to get yeah. much out of it. I, I will add this though. Yeah. Don't, don't let it be like this. Cause this was also me in my twenties where I was dialed Monday through Friday. And then Saturday, Sunday, I had the complete fuck it attitude mm. because I could, cause I can, you'll make so uh -huh. much, you'll make so much more progress if you still try and follow some of your rules on the weekend instead of just completely going, Oh, I'm not tracking today. Yeah. I'm drinking beer. I'm doing everything. Something that yeah. worked really, something that worked really well for me that might work for you, which is like, instead of telling myself, I can't have the beer, I can't have the fast food or can't do these things. It's like, I'm going to at least hit my protein and take in my, and get my training in. Yep. So it's yep. like, I'm going to, I'm going to get my lift in 
and I'm going to hit my protein intake. And then after that, if I'm out with the boys at nine and yeah. we're, we're going out drinking or we're going to go have a restaurant, I'm going to have the chips and dip. Like I'm going to enjoy myself. But I, th- those two, yeah. those two like rules for myself for the weekend of getting my lift in and then hitting my protein intake and then the rest, whatever, Yeah, that will keep you on pace because you'll be surprised how much uh, two days if you kind of just – have the uh, extreme on-off attitude, how that could really stall yeah. your, your progress because you go so extreme okay. one or the other. So yeah. at least have a, a good foundation. But to Sal's point, yeah. you know, you're not you're you're young. This is a time to enjoy life a little bit too. So you don't need to be you know anal about not having a beer with your buddies when you guys are having a good time. Peyton, yeah. how, how old are you, Peyton? I'm 23. Hey, are you going to school? Or are you working? I just graduated. I just got my master's in software engineering, so I'm just fin- I just finished. Oh, uh, so you got I know the see, but I, I'm wor- I I could smell your mentality. You're you're very very focused <laughs> and disciplined. That's great. Yeah, that's great, man. Yep. So Thank so you. if I was talking to a typical 23 year old, I'd be like, get your shit together on the weekend, whatever. But you don't you don't come across as like some 23 year old kid that's fucking off. So just enjoy your weekends, bro, because you're going to be you. too uptight if 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 you don't you know if you don't do that. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty good. Like, um, like you said on, I'm good on the weekends of, of, um, of like tracking protein and stuff like that. But again, the alcohol, but then the difference is when I go on vacation, it's like, it's all out. Like I'm going there to consume as much food as I can. And I know if you guys have talked about this, like don't eat so quickly and stuff like that. Yeah. And so that is like, that is one thing that I need to work on. Actually the last vacation would helped me. I don't know. This is weird, but I started just, eating like sunflower seeds because it just kept my hands moving and my mouth moving to like just not like eat so much food when I'm on vacation. Bro, so I, that was I, another thing. I love that. That's a nice hat. Yeah, I, but I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I, it was I, weird. It was so weird. I think I know what the problem is though. You're, you're too regimented, too strict on the week. And so the weekend becomes yes. a release. That's what I was saying. That's yeah. the point I was alluding to. Yeah. I was yes. the same way. In my 20s, I was dialed Monday through Friday. Saturday and yep. Sunday, I had the complete yeah, opposite yeah. attitude of, oh, yeah. but the belt comes off. Th- this was also a big, uh, you know, plateau breaker for me there. I was stuck in this rut for a long time. Yeah. And even as a trainer, I couldn't quite figure out why am I, why am I not able to get more shredded or look like this? And then this was, this was way before all these great tools that we have now, like the aura rings and the, we had, we didn't have that. So I could track once those tools came yeah. out, I saw what was happening. It was like, I was just totally over consuming bad calories, not hitting my protein intake, not training on the weekends. That was enough to stall my progress because, and I was still fit. I was still in good shape. I was a trainer, right? So to the average yeah, person, yeah, yeah. but I was trying to get to the next level. I couldn't get to the next level because I was so on off. And so that was why my advice yeah. to you is just, just don't go off the rails and okay. hit, ha- have a couple small rules. I love the eating sunflower seeds so you're not snacking on some other and maybe loosen yeah. up, maybe loosen up during the week a little bit so it doesn't feel like you have to completely disconnect. That makes sense. You know, every weekend just to come back to sanity because if your week is so regimented and stressful, that Saturday and Sunday yeah. come around that you feel like you need to let go. That's that's a sign yeah. that the week may be a little too regimented or too whatever, too stressed. So either mindset needs to change or some of the things that you're okay. doing during the week need to, need to change a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, Peyton, do you yeah, have, that that's all I had. But thank you so much, Peyton. We're gonna send you mass power lift. Do you have an Instagram? Okay, yeah, I do. Yeah, are you dating anybody? Or are you single? <laughs> I'm, I'm single. I'm single. Sal, we're, hey, we're gonna Sal. help. We're gonna help yeah. you out right now. What's your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Sal's so gonna get you laid. Yeah. Uh, it's it's PK. <laughs> All right, yeah. it's PK underscore fitness underscore nutrition. Yeah, we got a six foot tall mm. software engineer. He's a hot guy. Everybody, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's got too much discipline. Right, Check it out, ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got you. Hey, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> look okay, out, look out. You got it. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. calling in, man. All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks. you. Right, Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Good yes. kid. Yeah, good yeah. kid. At that age, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm telling him to loosen up. Yeah. <laughs> Most 23 year olds get flooded with DMs. Yeah, yeah like, get your out. ass together. Yeah. Like, get your shit together. I mean, he's built a lot like how I was built. And I and I do remember um, that was the, the. Bro, he was jacked in that picture. Yeah, well, yeah, for yeah sure. he looked. No, he looked great when he was bulking, right? Yeah, when he was yeah, putting, yeah, only putting calories in and stuff of that. But I, I mean, of course, you always want more, right? So as a kid, yeah, you're like, yeah. you know, I, I could get more, I could do more. And like, the weekends were, you've heard me talk about it, like winning the weekends became like a huge totally. like, change yeah. for me. Totally. And to your point about allowing that free. So my idea was like, okay, when I shifted away from the pizza, beer drinking, all the crazy stuff on Saturday and Sunday and said, okay, I'm going to win Saturday and Sunday 
And then if I still want pizza, beer, and those things, I'm just going to have it Monday through Friday. So mm -hmm. I actually have more days that I could have it if I wanted it. What I found was when I'm working, when I'm in my routine, I, I craved it less. I didn't want it as much. And then if I felt like I was deprived because I was winning the weekend and I was being so good on the weekend, I would then allow myself on Tuesday night to yeah, go have it. It was a point. great analogy I came up with. It was like about being jet lagged over the weekend and, uh, you know, wasn't that yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good one, though. You do the handoff. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Basically, start trying to make up sleep by going to bed late on Friday. Yeah. Monday comes around, you're jet lagged. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, that's a call. By the way, for, forget the, the kid we just talked to. A lot of people are like that when they go on vacation or mm -hmm. they look at like a break because their life is so ugh, yeah. Yeah, unmanageable yeah. in terms of regimen and stress. So they go off the rails. They go like crazy, you know, and it becomes less about enjoying yourself and more about releasing the fact that you felt so confined. So it's like a mindset shift, and maybe some of the some of the structure needs a shift. He's a gonna bit. crush it, dude. Our next caller is Justin from California. Hey, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thank you for having me on your show. This is truly an honor, and it's awesome. Thank you. You got it. Sweet. So, I got a question. I I remember. Uh, you know, many moons ago, Sal, you talk about jujitsu and it's purple belt. I believe if I remember correctly, uh, it was purple belt. <laughs> yeah, it's the one. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. You got it. <laughs> it's, been, it's been too <laughs> well, long. Well, you yeah. know, I'm on my journey again. I, I, you know, I trained 25 years ago or so and I'm back on the journey. So I wanted to ask you guys some questions and see, uh, you know, I, I know some of the answers possibly and I've watched some videos, but see what you guys have to say. I think this could help out a lot of people. Okay. Let's hear it. So my first question is like, what would be some strength and conditioning resistance training exercises for jujitsu? Yeah. Justin, when you trained before, how long did you train for? And then how long have you been doing jujitsu again now? So before it was about a year and right now I just started. So it's just a couple months. Okay. So you just got back into it. By the way, where, where do you, if you, if you don't mind me asking, what, where do you train? Cause you said you're from Santa Cruz. Yeah. So what, what school do you go to? Uh, Claudio Franza. Oh shit. That's where I trained San Jose. I trained at the San Jose location. Yeah. It's great, great, great place. They they host a great tournament, uh, every year as well. So, okay. So here's a deal. The conditioning you're going to get for jujitsu, the best conditioning you're going to get is going to be from doing more jujitsu. Okay? okay. Strength training. If, if when people try to lift weights to improve sports specific conditioning, it's not as good as practicing the sport itself. And you know this, right? You're okay. getting back into jujitsu. It's like you got to you got to do more jujitsu yeah. to get the stamina. It's a very high skill sport. Now, as far as strength training is concerned, general strength training exercises are going to have the most carryover for you right now. So, what does that look like? Deadlift, a squat, a lunge, an so overhead press, maps anabolic. Yeah, a row, maybe some rotation mm -hmm. will be good. Now, as your conditioning continues to improve with jujitsu, as you start to get into the more advanced levels. Then what you can do is you can modify some of your lifts. Like I would do pull-ups, but rather than holding onto the bar, I would take my gi and I'd wrap it around the bar and I would hold the sleeves and do pull-ups, for example. Or I'd do rows with sleeve attachments or I'd put a towel around dumbbells mm -hmm. just to kind of mimic grabbing the gi uh, when I would, whenever I would do those exercises. The most carryover that I ever saw uh, from any exercise in jujitsu, uh, was, I would say deadlifts gave me a tremendous amount of carryover when I was doing, um, any kind of stand up uh, kind of takedown type of stuff. And then my core strength had tremendous value when I was on the ground, especially when I was on the bottom playing the guard or half guard, just a really strong core, uh, made a big difference, but I wouldn't overemphasize, uh, beyond the general strength training, the strength training, any more than the jujitsu itself? Like how many days a week are you going right now? So I'm pushing uh three to four days a week. Oh, that's especially after just two months. That's a lot. How do you feel? You real sore? I'm, I'm pretty sore, but I focus on sleep and nutrition. I mean, it's, it's literally around the clock, just stretching, which kind of like leads into my second question, but it's just stretching mobility. Um, just food, like sleep. I mean, I'm, it's, it's literally like a full-time job. Yeah. So, just condition. Uh, and were you lifting weights before you started back into jujitsu? Yeah. I've always lifted weights and, and done a lot of calisthenics and, and just tried to stay fit in general. 
Okay. The most I would do with strength training right now, right now is one day a week, the mm -hmm. most. Because yeah. you're already pushing okay. it. Because I, I know how grueling it could be it's, and, and how it beats yes. up the body. So I yeah. would do like four lifts one day a week. I wouldn't train him to failure um, and just focus on kind of, you know, building overall strength. I would keep the reps around six to eight and just build okay. overall strength. I would do like a, you know, like I said, four kind of gross motor movements for now. When your fitness gets to the point where four days a week jujitsu feels like no, no big deal then you could get more specific, but that's going to take a little while. How do you feel about this too? I totally agree with that, but like adding in like a real emphasized focus on our prime program in terms of like being able to access certain ranges of motion again with strength and, and getting to the point too where uh, his, his body will react and will respond yeah. a little bit more appropriately. I mean, obviously you're going to be doing that with the skill training with jujitsu itself, but uh, in order to then figure out kind of a routine that preps all those main things that you feel in terms of like um, uh, soreness or in terms of like uh, a stiffness, a restriction. No, I uh, think that's good advice. Yeah. I mean, his next question is asking about uh, focusing on mobility and he's referencing probably some of the mobility yes. videos yeah. of that. I think that's the only thing I would add to Sal's advice is like pre going into your jujitsu is having like a little mobility flow. Yeah. Some and, ritual. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it could be whatever you want. Like if okay. you take, like, let's say you go through our prime pro webinar that we have, where I kind of take you through all the way from head to toe, some of my favorite, and it doesn't have to be that, or you take from, and we'll send you over prime pro program that Justin's referencing. Yeah. I would pick, I don't know, three, three of the the movements that may, you know, like a handcuff rotation, maybe some sort of a 90-90 mm -hmm. movement or something, three or four mobility movements and turn it into like a, like a flow yeah. of like one. Cause, full shoulder, full hip, full yep. ankle. Like those three would kind and of And that becomes like your ritual to getting started, to getting into, uh, you know, your rolling and stuff. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to look it up because I can't remember the name of, so there's mobile, there's jujitsu, Mo, um, mobility specific or mobility that are jujitsu specific that are going to be really good for you that the average person, eh, they wouldn't get tons of benefit out of necessarily, but you would. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like one of them would be like the Barimbolo uh, type movements where you could practice that on your own. Do you know what that is? I do not. I've heard of it, but I don't. Yeah. So you ever see the jujitsu guys, they'll be on their back and they'll walk their feet around and kind of roll over okay. their head and their toes are mm -hmm. touching the, and they're kind of rolling around in that way. So it's a lot of like neck and back mobility and movement. So like something like that, there's a good hip mobility drill you could do on the floor where you're mimicking being in the open guard, but you kind of um, like egg beater your legs where you're okay. opening them up. You probably do this in your warm up. Like that would be really good. There's good wrestling mobility movements you could do where you're practicing bridging and stuff like that. That's going to give you a lot of carryover uh, for jujitsu in particular. Like those, those, those that type of mobility is required uh, for you to perform really well uh, with jujitsu. And then one more thing, when you're training okay. three or four days a week, uh, modify the intensity of when you when you roll as well. So if you're feeling like sore and tired and stiff, you know, yeah. tell your partner you just want to flow or just work off your back the whole time. Uh, let people pass your guard. Maybe just practice, you know, trying to recover the guard the whole time. Don't worry about tapping out okay. a million times. When I, that took me a long time to figure out. One of my instructors said, why are you trying, you know, stop pushing yourself so hard all the time. Why don't you yeah. practice flowing? And then I, I got better because for me, at least one of my weaknesses was, uh, that I, I could use my strength and get away with not having the same tech, the, the best technique. Once I loosened up a little bit, my technique had to get a lot sharper and my body didn't get so beat up. So just some, something else to focus on. Yeah. I think that, um, what I like about, I was at a previous dojo the last month. And so what I like about Franza is that they do a warm up at the beginning. Yeah. So then I don't have to come up with a warm up like before I get to the dojo or do it there so they already have it like programmed in and and that's really helpful and i do have a uh, prime pro and i oh, was actually awesome, incorporating man. at the previous dojo was the handcuff to rotation the video that you did which is like amazing the mobility video and you know prime pro, prime pro is awesome and so is prime actually for my shoulders because mm -hmm. it keeps it simple for me and so yeah it's i i was trying to like Put all that together awesome. at the beginning. Little side note: or You're in Santa Cruz. Do you surf? I do not know. Okay. Here's the reason why I asked that: is you know, I mean, you might know this because you're in the jujitsu world. 
the uh, jujitsu guys, especially from Brazil, I, I never surfed, so I have no idea if this is legit or not, but they swore mm -hmm. that surfing had tremendous carryover to jujitsu. Like all the Brazilians just raved about this. You might be able to even ask okay. your instructor if this is a legit thing, but just a little side note. It's got to be the, the core and the, the shoulder mobility and strength that's required. And just getting up on the board, balancing, like the type of stamina. They, they would rave about it, just say, oh, it's the best. Like it, the carryover was amazing. Oh, but amazing. I don't know if it's because it originated in Brazil and they do mm -hmm. lots of surfing there. And they're just, I don't know. I never tried it myself, but, hmm. you know, just something else to, to you know, if you, if you want to have fun while you work out, that might be something to look into. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I'm really learning the importance of shoulder mobility and, you know, like, the third question was kind of like, you know, explosiveness, but also tied into, you know, just the mobility of like thoracic spine and the lower back and how important that is. And it's, uh, it's definitely no joke. That's for sure. Yeah. You're, you're the yeah. general strength gains you're going to get are going to give you the most, uh, the best explosive carryover later on. You could do more specific explosive type training. And then if you transfer and do like no gi, rolling that'll teach you how to really be more explosive because you know the gi slows you down quite a bit yeah yeah okay all right justin thanks for calling awesome. in man. good Thank luck you guys yeah yeah man. you got it man that's cool you trained at the same place eh? Huh? that is cool i'm sure yeah. nobody remember you know it was, it was so long ago mm. but uh good you they might, know they might have a big picture of you in there <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. Everybody it's brings like, candles underneath it. <laughs> Nobody cares, uh, bro. <laughs> so you know what's, what sucks is the guys that I uh, that I used to train with, like that were my level. They're all like black belts. Yeah, get like get asses now, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, you trained with some badasses. For yeah, sure. it's pretty cool. But uh, but no, you know this is good question because um, you know uh, when you get to like a super high level, then your outside training becomes a little bit more like specific and whatever. But for most people getting more fit for their sport, it, the best thing to do is play more or do more of the sport. Nothing's yeah. going to really give you I more. I love you, especially, yeah, like working on the skills and using that as a way to condition yeah. because it's like you get both of those uh, benefits to that. So Totally.